morning, ladies. As Michelle says, hello, ladies. So I hope you guys are having a fun, awesome day. I have, I'm having a good day. I am totally having a good day. I am going to make some packaging tags and I am going to use my new little tiny, hi Susan, hi Nancy. I'm going to use my new little jelly plate that my secret sister from that stamping group sent me and I'm excited. I'm going to use that. You don't have to have a jelly plate to, to paint along. I'm going to make some library pockets. Hi, Alta. So I know the first thing you guys are all going to tell me is that this is not my normal day to stream. And I know it. I totally know it. No, no, know it. Anyway, hi, Bet. So I wanted to share some news with you guys. So tell me what you guys are up to. Bet how how Bet and Susan, how's the weather in Texas? How is your how's everything going for you guys? Hey Nancy. Um, I have a tag punch. I have a couple of tag punches. Actually, the tags that you saw in my video that come through in it, they're a Tim Holtz die. And I love it. It's a Biggs die. But you know, I have cut my tags myself, my tabs myself. Um, all you need, I mean, you can cut them in many ways. There, there's no right or Hi, Arlena. You're standing on the corner. Arlena, Arlena, is, you're standing on the corner waiting on the bus. Well, I'm glad you're here. Hi, Karen. So, you guys know how much I love a good Tom Clancy novel. So, I am going to cut out some pages. I like, <laughs> look, I don't read this. I haven't. I don't read Tom. I like Tom Clancy. I'm not saying I don't like him, but I don't read Tom Clancy anymore. But if you can find a book that made that he wrote, not one written by, you know, how he has those ghost writers, the quality of the pages is great. Hi, Mary Lou. But Nancy, I hope that answered your question. But you can cut your tabs by hot by tags by hand and your tabs by hand. I am as obsessed with tag dies. Out of all the dies that you can have, I'm obsessed with tag dies. Hi, Melanie. So I know today's not my normal day, but I wanted to share some stuff that's going on with me. Susan says, Bet and she are great. And they open the front door to many parcels. The mail is running. Awesome. You know, I talked to my cousin, and they finally got back over to where their house is. And their house had five feet of water in it. And all of their cars are gone. And it's a very sad day for all of them. But you know what? She's got such a great attitude. She was so sweet. She was like, you know what? I always wanted to have my, I wanted a different, you know, to renovate my house. And now I get to do it. And you know, I know it's not a good time for everybody, but I'm so happy that you guys are okay. Nancy, you know what? When I first started, I had nothing, okay? I had a um, couple of used books and some magazines and some cheap paint and a pair of scissors. I think I had a circle punch. So if you look and, uh, and that was it. And so if you look at my first, there is the one that says junk journal as a coffee table book that was one of the first junk journals that I ever made and I made all my tags and all my tabs by hand because I didn't have anything else and hey Susan will you go over and post in the group or, or I think I did already I, I, I posted you don't have to post anything so as many of you know, I put out a new video today, and normally I don't talk about my stuff. I mean, I talk about my ridiculous craziness, my calamari, which I'm, I do, we're still doing today. We took two loads of, we're, we're cutting down, our yard looks like a, a jungle, and it's just becoming unmanageable, and so we took two, we trimmed all of our shrubs and all of our, um, I think this is good to start with. Trimmed all of our shrubs and all of our, you know, trees and stuff. And it was so much stuff that we've taken loads. Today we took two more loads to 
the green waste. So first I think I'm going to make some library pockets. So if you guys want to join in, grab some book pages or magazine pages. They can be anything. You don't have to paint yours. I am going to paint and jelly print mine. You don't. And then I'm going to pick, make some tags. And these tags I made from, um, let me see, cake boxes, Pop-Tart boxes, that sort of thing. And I'm going to paint on them. So... What I wanted to, so, not calamari, conmari. <laughs> I know, did you guys see? That was so sweet. The girl in our Facebook group said, no, she was so funny. She says, I can understand, she goes, I understand, you know, she didn't, she goes, what does calamari have to do with crafting? You guys, it just made me laugh. It was so brilliant. It's just the gift that keeps on giving, you know? So, anyway, I'm going to make some library pockets. So, it's so, they're so easy to make, and once you make them, you'll be like, you'll be like having a good time. If I didn't say hi to you, chat me up, and all you lurkers hanging out there in the universe, come on in and say, howdy. This is not my normal day, I know, and I'm waiting for one of you girls to come on and say, what's wrong with you? It's not your normal day. So, as all of you guys know, I've been cleaning out my space and doing stuff, so I don't know how long many of you have been, um working with me or chatting with me or getting to know me on my YouTube channel. But I have been, so not to get too personal, but you guys are my peeps. Hi, Al. Hi, Ann. How's your, how's your arm, Ann? Hi, Bridgeline. It's not Tuesday or Friday. I know it's not. Okay. So, and I can't open this back up. You guys, what is wrong with me? So this is a tiny jelly plate. It's a three by five, and I'm excited to use it. I've always wanted one, and I'm excited to use it. And it was a gift, so I don't know how much it costs because I know inevitably somebody's going to ask me. So for those of you that are not so familiar with me, I live in Hawaii, and I've lived here for about nine years, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I love living here. It's not always an easy place, but I love living here. Anyway, to make a very long story short, I was married for a very long time, 20 some odd years, 25 years, I think. And he and I have always been friends, you know, been really amicable about our kids and just, you know, work together. And we have stayed legally married for our children, not because we, we haven't lived together in I want nine years okay so this year recently last year now he and I talked used to talk like once a day about our kids and different things this is a brayer anyway last October you know he's been in a relationship with somebody for several years say three or four years maybe three years maybe but he's gone through multiple girlfriends and you know our agreement was whenever one of us met someone or we wanted to get married or the kids were all out of the house that we would and we and we stayed married because we owned property together you guys we have property and real estate and it just and it's stupid I know but I was naive and we would known each other 30 years why would I think anything different so last October without even talking to me and mind you we talked every day about our kids you know Without even talking to me, he files for divorce, which was not had. I mean, we used to discuss it all the time, but anyway, he filed for divorce. And because I live in Hawaii, we had always agreed that we would, you know, share an attorney and do all these things. Well, girls, you think you know somebody, and then you realize you don't. So that's fine, whatever. So. You know, he filed where he lives, and I said, to, you know, then I found out I tried to get a lawyer where he lived. Now I've no, I've never lived in the area he lives in. We we still own we still co-own a house, and it's being rented out to someone. So to make a very wild, long story ridiculous, long story short, um, he filed where he lives, and then I called a lawyer where he lives, and they said you can't file here because they you don't live here you've never lived here you don't own property here anyway it was ridiculous so 
we've had to I had to get a lawyer here and it just it just went on and on and on so when I do my library pockets I don't jelly print the whole page I jelly print up to what I need and then I jelly print on the other side does that make sense so I'm not wasting paint it doesn't really matter you could jelly print the whole page but I'll show you what I mean anyway so he got a lawyer here too but then he had filed there and he, it was it's very long and complicated so to make a very long story short, you know, I originally left because he wouldn't move out of our home. And then, of course, after I left, he moved out immediately. So it makes no sense. It's almost like, you know, he didn't want me to have the house. He didn't want to live there. He didn't want me to have it. So anyway, through this whole course of stuff, and, you know, I always try to stay zen. You know, he's gotten sort of ugly, and I just haven't bought into it, and I just try to stay, like, positive and you know because it's there's no point to getting it was ridiculous we'd been amicably separated for all these years there's no reason to suddenly be ugly right there's no reason to be ugly period but um so anyway that's why i've had it's why I've, it's been a, a a lot of my stress and i have to tell you there are some days i can cope better than others because he's done some really not nice things to our kids and that is a whole nother thing so, you know, I got a ruling that my kids and my custody and my divorce can be granted here, but my property settlement has to be granted in the state where we bought the property, which makes it makes us both have to get other lawyers. And I was just like, uh, in the meantime, he filed where he lives. So I've been negotiating with them, right? Because honestly, you guys... I would have stayed in my house. I had a great house, and I loved my house, but he didn't, he wouldn't move out, and I couldn't live with him anymore. I mean, you know, I just couldn't. And so I was led to believe, so in the course of all this since October, right, since last October, and it should, you guys, it should not have lasted this long. It's just ridiculous. Just goes to show you people what people do when they think there's money involved, you know. Um, I was led to believe, and because my attorney doesn't pa practice law, my attorney here obviously doesn't know the it, laws differ from state to state. Okay, let's just say that. And I've really learned a lot about law and lawyers and stuff I never even wanted to know. So. Hi, Sarita. I'm sorry I'm not looking up you guys. I'm like jelly printing. And if I'm missing your comments and you want me to know it, say it out loud. Say it. Hi, Amberly. Hi, Nancy. So anyway, to make a very ridiculous long story short, I was, I'm supposed to go to court in, on the East Coast next week. And you know, it's it's ridiculous because they have because they don't have jurisdiction over me. I don't have jurisdiction. We don't have jurisdiction over him. He hasn't just put it this way. He's lied a lot. Okay, and you forget I was married to this man for twenty five years, and I've known him for thirty years. All right, so you know when somebody's lying to you. Anyway, and he stopped talking to me. It's just ridiculous. All over this lovely girlfriend, I might add. You know, meanwhile I've had Hottie in my life for like seven of the nine years I've been separated from my husband or whatever ex-husband, and, you know, he doesn't interfere in anything, you know, he is a wonderful stepdad to my children, and he's wonderful to me, and he's been very respectful of even my ex, when my ex does, like, my ex has come and stayed in my house, you guys, okay, that's how amicable our relationship was, he would come and stay in my house a couple times a year, to with all of us here, to, to see the kids. Because it's really expensive to come to Hawaii. So they sent a final negotiate, a final offer. And you guys, it was like basically, it wasn't anything we discussed. Like every single conference call and things that we've had, it was nothing that we discussed. It was like as if some stranger was deciding on giving, it was like some new, you know, some new case or something. It was so stupid. So my attorney here said, look, you know, even though we thought that you could negotiate all this stuff here, I mean, you should be able to, I think you're going to have to get an attorney in Boston. Now, you guys, this is at the 11th hour. 
course they've like wasted my time, not my attorney, but their attorney has wasted my time and our time and, you know, just trying to, I think trying to basically thinking that they're going to wait me out and then I'm just not going to come to Boston and whatever. So to make a very long story short, on the day that I woke up at three o'clock in the morning, which was, was that Tuesday or whatever, or Monday that I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and I was like, I couldn't sleep and was wide awake. It was primarily over all this because it doesn't just affect me. It affects my kids. Okay. And I mean, he stopped paying his child support. He stopped helping his kids. He has kids in college. He's not even, he's alienated our children to the fact that he's like not even talking to them. N nothing to do with me. They went to visit him and he, he threw them out of his house. It was like, it was like, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of like a teenager that's not getting his way and then just acts out. So anyway, I've been trying to like stay out of whatever's going on between him and our grown children because let's face it, you know, when your kids are in their 20s, they have a mind of their own anyway. They're not going to listen to what you say. But um, he, and he's done some not nice things to our daughters. Like just not nice, just really not nice. Anyway, so he, uh, I had, I had, was forced to get an attorney. So yesterday or two, Monday, I don't know. I've been trying for a while to find one there. It's not so easy as you think. And because my case is a little bit more complicated than the average case, you know, nobody really wants to take it on. There's not like huge, some huge sum of money at the end of the rainbow or anything. It's just really, you know, a little bit of a little bit of money in a house and a small piece of land that, you know, originally we had agreed to give to our kids. So in the midst of all this, I find out that my husband has taken my name off the mortgage. He's forged forged documents and took my name off the mortgage. I didn't know that. You know, like I'm telling you, I talk to this man every day for the past nine years. Well, obviously not this past year. He's decided he's not speaking to me because I think when he speaks to me, he feels guilty. So I had to get an attorney. So I, that is why you suddenly saw that ridiculous buy a kit video from me because <laughs> I have to pay this attorney like all this money that right at this very given moment I don't have. But I'm excited that I found out the exciting part is this is I found out I don't have to give him my house. I found out that I have, even though he took my name off the mortgage without my knowledge and signed, actually committed mortgage fraud, right? But I don't have to give him my house, that I can fight for my house. And I'm, I'm actually excited as opposed to feeling like, woe is me and this is what I get. I feel more like, wow, this is so awesome. Like I, I may get my house back, which will make me like super happy. Whether I ever decide to move back there or not, it was, we had always had this house for our kids, you know, and he doesn't even live in it, you know, and I had asked at some point in our negotiation, I said, you know, I'd like to move back to our house, and he was like, oh, I don't feel comfortable with that, based on the fact that he had refinanced it without my knowledge and took my name off the mortgage. So the upside, the exciting news, and all of this crap is that there's like this glimmer of hope that I can get my house back, and so... That's what's going on with me. Hi, Phaedra. Hi, Sharon. Um, you know what? If you buy one of those kits, it's that grab bag kit. It's the it's the one. If you go to the Etsy store, it's a grab bag. It doesn't say grab bag. Bag. It just says junk journal kit. It'll, you'll get something similar to it. You'll get like all those really cool, fun, eclectic papers. You'll get all the handmade envelopes and all that stuff. I, I don't think I can make a video for every kit. It's just the same. It, it'll just be similar. You know, that's why um, I said it. So now you guys know what I can see you. Hi, Mary Kay. Hi, Susan. Hi, Sally Ann. Kelly and I loved your feathers. They were awesome. Yeah, Phaedra, it was totally, you know what, because you guys, I've sort of resigned myself over this whole year that I was not going to be able to get my, you know, I've like tried, to, part of me has been able to, you know, like, it's been sort of sad, you know, because I really loved this house and I put a lot of energy and effort into it. Now, I don't know if I'll ever move back into it, but 
the fact that I wasn't even given an option to before was kind of like, you know, when your energy, I mean, I would have stayed in the house if he'd moved out, but he wouldn't move out at the time. He was like, I don't know. I think he thought if he stayed there that he and I'd stay together, but you guys, nothing really bad happened between he and I. We just sort of grew apart and it was just, it was, it was actually a little sad in many ways, you know, and you know, like we just grew apart. You know, when you've been with somebody for that long, sometimes you grow together and other times you don't. And he and I just didn't. So that's it. Yes, Nancy bought one for me earlier. And I have to make it. So realize, girls, these kits are not pre-made. So I have to make it for you. And um, maybe I'll get it together to make pre-make a bunch of them. But I, I, I haven't. The only thing that I do have is a bunch of journal covers that I, um, that I was excited. I love those Reader's Digest covers. Do you guys like those? Especially if you've never, ever made a junk journal. They're really fabulous because you don't have to do anything to it. So that is my news, okay? I know it's ridiculous, and I know it's probably a little TMI, but that is what my news is. And I'm feeling, like, really super hopeful. I mean, I try to stay positive in the light of all this stuff, and I don't want anything bad to happen to anyone. Anyone, not even him. As not nice as he's been, I have been nice through the whole thing because, you know what? There's no point in being, and, and the silly thing is, is that it makes no sense. Like, you know, but do you remember when, you know, part of me just kind of figured out, I love those Reader's Digest books. They're not so easy to find here, but I did, I have, I want to say maybe I have 10 or 20 at this point. I'll keep collecting. If people buy them, if I, if I sell the kits, then I'll go scour for some more. You know, they're not always easy to find. And um, I love those Reader's Digest, though. I do. I have to say, they're some of my faves. Well, it t it'll take me, I'm guessing it'll take me about a week, Nancy, because, like, I'll make some library pockets from these pages that I'm doing here, and that's why I'm painting some. So if you guys go look at the video, in the kit you get some of my painty weird stuff, okay? Some of my, some of my... You guys, get, you guys get some of my painty weird stuff, okay? So you get some of my painty weird stuff. But just know when you buy a kit, you're funding a house. You're funding the potential of me getting my house back. You know, that is why I suddenly, I mean, I've always had an Etsy shop. I used to have a really big Etsy shop where I sold all this jewelry. And I may start putting up some D-stash stuff. You guys, I have all kinds of D-stash beads. And I don't know if I'm going to put my glass work on there. I haven't. In all honesty, I haven't really done a lot of Etsying. Etsy kind of bummed me out for a while. I used to have a really good Etsy jewelry store, and I sold a lot of stuff. It's not the same crafting mamas. And then Etsy changed its algorithm, and then it just got, I don't know, and then they started charging you more fees and just doing other stuff. If you've been on Etsy a long time, you would know, but if you're new to Etsy, you're just kind of like, oh, that's not a big deal. But you know how sometimes, like, when you know, like, you've been on something and you're like, that's not how it was. They're just gouging me, you know? You have some French Reader's Digest? Okay, now I'm officially jealous, Phaedra. I am officially jealous. I don't have any French ones. I don't have any French ones. I have some really cool ones, but I don't have any French ones. <laughs> My painty papers and weird stuff is exactly why you got it. Oh, well, that's good. Because I was kind of thinking, is my stuff too weird for people? You know, like, it's not too weird for me, but, you know, it could be too weird for other people, you know? And then it comes some coffee dyed paper for all you coffee dyed paper lovers. Um, and, or some tea dyed, tea dyed stuff. So tell me what's on your credit. So now you guys heard my woe is me. Okay, now you heard. Because you know what? After I put the video up, I got this personal message, like, now, what what are you've never done this or something? It was something like a little accusatory, and I just wanted to. Normally, I don't tell you guys all my all my shizzle, but sometimes when I get on, sometimes crafting with you guys is the only thing that sees me through this drama. Because I'm telling you, it has been ridiculous drama, drama on a freaking stick, not necessary drama on a stick. Okay, drama that shouldn't is totally not necessary. But I got this message from the person will remain anonymous that said, what? You know, and I said, well, I've always had an Etsy shop. I always have. I just don't, I'm just not 
a hawker, you know, but I'm hawking myself in that video and I'm letting you guys know why, okay, because no, I didn't have anything as tragic as all the people in Texas did, but for me, the possibility of getting my house back is just, I have to tell you, I'm just happy. Hey, Joyce, how are you? And, you know, if it doesn't work, okay, but at least I have a chance where I was, I was kind of like made to believe because I didn't have an attorney there and my attorney here doesn't know the law there. It's like weird how laws vary from state to state. Um, you know, and it also took me a while to get the paperwork and stuff. Thanks, Phaedra. Thanks for saying my stuff's not weird. You know what? It's new. It's not weird to me, but it's like weird to a lot of other people, you know? So now you guys know my ridiculous 411. Now you know my ridiculousness and and all. It's all out there. My shizzle is all out there. So if you guys, if you guys feel like supporting me, head over to my Etsy store. So it's it's the junk journal. There there's like one junk journal kit. There's like a random random kit, like a I don't know what I call it, grab bag kit, which just comes with all kinds of eclectic. It doesn't have all the same things as the junk journal. And then there's like a junk journal kit for parties, which the reason I made that is I had somebody want, I didn't sell it on it through Etsy, but I made one because I've sold it not on Etsy when somebody just messaged me on Facebook. I made um, junk journal kits for five people for a party. So that was cool. And so tell me what's going on with you guys. I want to hear. I want to know. I want to know. Bet and Susan said they're good in Houston, which makes me very happy because I have to tell you, that has stressed me out. Yeah, and, you know, all my stuff is sort of like weird and eclectic, one-of-a-kind stuff. You know, it's like, it's like, so if I make a bunch of library pockets out of these papers that I'm making right here, right, they're going to be what they are, you know? They are what they are. I mean, there's all kinds of weird stuff on there. I mean, I have, that Etsy shop doesn't have a lot of stuff on it. Not like my jewelry one. My jewelry one had a lot. And the only reason why I haven't reinstated it is I was sort of, I don't know, I was sort of pouting, you guys. I was pouting over Etsy. I was pouting over the fact that I felt like, um, that I felt like, you know, there wasn't, it's fine to change your policies, but, you know, it just seemed like abrupt. I'm telling you, last week gave me so many gray hair, I can't even tell you. Last week was like, I don't know. Like, you know, I'm still talking to my family and friends that are still trying, you know, that are, you know, just sort of waking up from the storm. And it's been horrible. And I feel so bad. Makes you sort of feel helpless, you know, makes you feel like, like you really can't do much. And then if you watch enough television, it really can get to you. You call them treasures, Anne. Awesome. Awesome. So tell me what's on your crafty table, girls. I want to hear. Now you guys heard my boohoo. Usually I don't boohoo, but I boohooed today. And for those of you that are offended, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm human. Okay. I am human. I am more than a crafter. I am human. <laughs> Oh, Lord, you guys, seriously. It was like, I think last week with the whole, the, or whatever, the whole storm, I think it's also been for me, and I'm not even in it, right? You guys are in it. But it's felt like this adrenaline thing going on through my body, and then now that, like, I know that most of my family and friends are all, you know, the ones I've heard from are all okay. You know, it's sort of been like, okay, now what do I do with this? I still have this energy going on inside of me that's making me feel like a little anxious, you know? And so it's almost like waiting for the other shoe to drop, right? So I'm hoping that you guys are all having like some, having some peace this week. It is one big mess, Ann.
Oh, thanks, Bridgeline. You know, normally I don't talk about my stuff. I mean, only when I get super upset. And sometimes, you guys, the worst thing is, is like sometimes, like, it just, it comes out of nowhere. Like, your my upsetness. Does that happen to any of you guys? Like, sometimes my upsetness just will come out of nowhere. You guys are so special to me. You have no idea. No, absolutely no idea. I'm so grateful. I am so grateful that you're in my life. And I'm so grateful that you're all, like, meeting your crafty best friends and, like, hanging out and doing your own thing and sharing your stuff. You're still working on your first junk journal, Nancy? Awesome. Junk journals, once you make one, it's like, you just, like, you can't, you just keep going. It's like, I don't know what it is about a junk journal. Can you guys, anybody want to pipe in about what it is for them in a junk journal? Like, why it's, like, so exciting to make them? Does anybody else besides me want to talk about that? That They're just, like, super fun, I think. That's just where I, that's what I think. Yeah, like, doesn't it feel like it's, like, you're, like, anxious? I've been, like, anxious, and I don't, I just keep thinking, like, okay, why am I anxious? Like, what's going on with me? What, what's going on that I'm not completely aware of, right? It's, it has been scary for everyone, Joyce. I think you're absolutely right. Joyce says one of her family members kept, um, you know, she kept feeling like she could, you know, she needed to contact them, and it was hard. Let me read Nancy's comments both. Oh, Nancy, thank you. Nancy says she has to admit this is a special group here and she's enjoying it. Well, I hope you guys always feel encouraged. I hope you always feel encouraged because I am encouraged by being with you. Hi, Fee! And I love what you guys are sharing. And please, I hope none of you are holding back from sharing because you're new to something. Share it. Nobody, okay, group rule... Number one is no one will criticize your work, okay? If they don't have something positive to say, they won't say anything. So you don't ever have to be fearful of putting your work out in that group, in our group on Facebook, that somebody's going to say something that's not appropriate to you because that's just not how it rolls. And it's not how it's going to roll because I, I can't have that. You guys, this world has too much not nice stuff in it, and I refuse to be part of that. That's why even with my ex, you know, it's like, because I know he's going to wake up and he's going to go, what did I do? And it was all over money. And it wasn't even a lot of money, you guys. That's the sad part. Oh, I agree, Alta. Thank you, Alta. So she belongs to a lot of groups, but this one's the best. You know what? You girls make it that way. You do. The love that you share with each other makes it that way. Hi, Melanie. You love coming here and hearing about, <laughs> talk about life and crafting. You know what? I think my friends and my things, I like, you know, I appreciate you guys being here with me. And I love hearing all the stuff you guys tell me too, you know? I love it. I procrastinate too, Mary Kay. Don't feel bad. I've been in the funk, you guys. I'm going to admit it. I'm feeling better today, so I can tell you now for sure. I've been in a funk. I have been in a real funk. And the... You know, part of it was like the stuff that I'm going through with my ex, but part of it was me, just me, you know, and part of it was just me. I would love this. The name of this chapter is Ramblings and Dreams. Yeah, I'm a rambler today, that's for sure. I I've, I've been going through my own stuff, you guys, and it's been like, it's not been pretty. Trust me, I try to stay in complete release as, mu as much of the day as I can. Procrastinating, I get it. I totally get it. Procrastinating. Is work so is is a is a great word and so is craft a lanch. What did when you guys tell me that you had a craft a lanch in your house? Hi, Kayala. Yeah, I procrastinate too, and I have a craft a lanch. I have to tell you, I'm digging this little tiny jelly plate. Usually, I have a little bit bigger one, and I like it too. But this little three by five one, it's it's like doing the job for me. Um, and I'm gonna fold these pockets so you guys can see how I do it and I have somewhere I have a corner punch but you guys it's still in my mess I am not by any means in a space where I can find all my stuff here <laughs> you 
Yes, this is a jelly. This is a small jelly plate. I didn't. It's not one I made. It's a one I bought. I mean, I didn't buy it. Somebody gave it to me. This little jelly art, it's three by five plate. It works great. So if you can't afford a big one, get a little one. Um. Okay. Don gave us a new. A crafter um craft. How do you say this word? Crafty 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 Irum, Crafty Irum. Write the, write the regular word, Don, and then I'll be able to create it. You can't get your phone to type. Oh, it was a... <laughs> oh, no. Amanda said she's had, had a rough time. She just... Oh, no. Amanda, we are going to send you some good love. All right, all girls. All the girls that need some extra love right now, put yourself in the center of our circle. Get your feet flat on the floor. Get your feet flat on the floor. Get your feet flat on the floor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are no rights and wrongs in junk journaling. Okay. So Amanda needs some extra love. I'm sure she's not the only one. Fiona, you jump in the middle of that circle too. Anyone that needs extra special love. Okay. I want you to put yourself in your column, girls. Get yourself in that big column of light and look up and you can't see the top and look down and you can't see the bottom and allow your column of light to go deep in the earth and spread its tree roots. Yay! Ask the earth to bless you with her energy. I see this energy is gold. You can see, feel, think it, and know in any way you'd like. Put your feet flat on the floor and close your eyes if you feel like it. Feel this beautiful gold earth energy rising up all the way through your feet, ankles, calves, knees, hips, thighs, base of your spine, lower abdomen, solar plexus, heart area, up your spine, throat, shoulders, upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrists, and out every finger. Feel this gold energy in your throat, in your face, and feel it fountaining out the top of your head. Breathe it in. Breathe it in. Breathe it in. Imagine the highest point of heaven, creation, cosmic, angelic energy that you can easily, effortlessly, and enjoyably imagine. Feel this energy coming through the top of your head and mixing with your earth energy and spreading. Your face, your throat. All the running all the way down your spine, running down your shoulders, upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrists, and out every finger. Feel it filling your chest. Feel it filling your solar plexus. Feel it filling your lower abdomen, base of your spine. And feel it pouring all the way through your legs and out your feet into your tree roots, into the earth. Ready? Breathe it in. Breathe it in. And one more time, breathe it in. So put your attention on your heart. And for all those that want some special attention, allow yourself to be in the middle of this beautiful ring of love that we all create together. Put yourself in the middle of it. And you can still be on the outside and in the inside at the same time. Isn't that cool? You can be anywhere you can imagine. So put yourself in there, and I want you to breathe in, receive love, and on the on the inhale and on the exhale, give love. Ready? Receive love and give love. Breathe love and receive it and give it. And receive love. And give love. And I want you to put whatever intention you want for your life in that circle. Doesn't matter what it is. Just make it positive. If you're feeling something negative, turn it into a positive. So if you're if you if you're tired, or you or you or you're not sleeping, you're not sleeping well. Say um, put in the in, put in instead of saying I'm tired and not sleeping well. Put it in the circle. I am increasing my energy. I am allowing peace and calm to come to my body so that my sleep is restful. Always add something positive. Ready? So put it in, whatever you want. Ready? Breathe it in. 
And for all those that need health and healing, add that to it. Whatever you need, put it in that circle. Ready? Breathe it in. Receive it. And breathe it in. Receive it. And breathe it in. And receive it. And one more time. Breathe it in. And receive it. Now let's breathe in all the love that we can muster for ourselves and others. And on the exhale, let's send it out to those in need all around the planet. Anywhere that you would like this energy to go. It's only going to bring peace, love, and harmony. Ready? Breathe this energy into you. Now send it anywhere you'd like. And breathe it in. And send it out. And breathe it in. And send it out to wherever you'd like it to go. And one more time. Breathe it in. And send it out. sounds great. So to open up a window or a door in your heart, okay, and I want you to allow the pain to go out. For any of those of you that are in pain, I want you to see this pain as smoke leaving your body. Open the window in the center of your chest, whatever your window looks like. Ready? Breathe in healing and love, miraculous health. Breathe it in. Open the window and let out anything that doesn't serve you. Breathe in love and let go of anything that you don't like that's going on in your life. You don't even have to think about it. Just release it. Hi, Nancy. Breathe it in. Hi, Lucinda. Breathe in love, calm, peace, good health, whatever it is that you need. Breathe it in, receive it in love, and open the window and exhale anything that doesn't work. Okay, girls, tell me how you feel. You got... Melanie said that she got a Coca-Cola stamp. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Sarita. I'm sending you lots of love, okay? I hope you can fill it. Your feet are hot? Great. It's good news. You're feeling the energy. You're feeling relaxed? Awesome. I am too. I guess I work on myself all day long, but it also helps when other people are here, too. Because, you know, your energy, our energies are collective, right? So that's how collective consciousness works. Our energy is collective. So when we allow ourselves to receive, give and receive, everybody feels it. And, you know, what is that present? What is that prayer that says, whatever two or more of you ask in my name? You know that prayer well it's true it works it works on all different levels okay that is actually a key a key component in energy healing hi Kylie oh Amanda we're happy and we want you to feel free to talk about whatever's going on with you anytime okay there's nothing that you can't talk about here. God, you guys, we've talked about Pocket Man. We can talk about anything, right? Pocket Man was ridiculous. So we can talk about anything here. So I'm so happy you guys are here. Hi, Samantha. Oh, you're on a staycation, Kayla? Oh, good for you, honey. 
I'm not on a staycation. I'm on a I'm on a calamari. <laughs> we we have been manically <coughs> cleaning our yard. I let go of a bunch of books. I cleaned out my closets. I have not. I got part of the garage cleaned. I haven't gotten it all like organized and stuff, but a lot of it is. It's getting better. And then pretty soon I'll have my craft space back, which um, that I have to tell you is exciting more than anything. It's all good, Dawn. Are you kidding? I was having technical difficulties the other day trying to watch Carla. Did you guys, any of you guys watch, um, Roach Cage Fish the other day? I was trying so hard and it just kept buffering and throwing me out. It's only I had to give up. I can't, you know, when you can't see anything or hear anything, you don't work until Tuesday. Awesome. That's so good. You guys just know that those of you that want to receive the energy, you can always come back and listen to this again and receive it. You just say yes, and those that don't, just say no. And it doesn't come to you if you don't want it. That's just how it works. It's just how it works. Tell me how you girls are feeling now. How How is you feeling, my sisters? Oh, look, that's a blank. Hmm. Hmm. Blanky blank. Awesome. You're making embellishments for a Christmas swap? Oh, that sounds great. That sounds so good, Sarita. Good for you. What kind of embellishments are you making? What kind of embellishments are you making? guys I'm all about I think I'm addicted to embellishments all right I'm not gonna lie I think I'm a little addicted to hi Leah I think I how Leah I loved your rock your painted rock that you did it was gorgeous I love it hi Patricia um the reason you feel you feel sleepy after you do the energy work is because you're receiving it and it puts you in an altered state, like a dream state, sort of. And sometimes our conscious mind... Okay, so have you ever, like, burned yourself, but you didn't realize you burned yourself until you, like, saw it? You burned yourself? Do you know what I mean? You're making along with me, Sally and Awesome. You, like, look at it and you go, oh, I'm burning. Because it takes a while for your mind and your body to... Your mind to tell your body what is going on. So when you're doing this energy work, it's actually outside of your mind. It doesn't exist in your mind. It exists in your energy body. You know, like, like when you feel like goosebumps or you feel like, um, the hair stands on your arms, up on your arms on an end and that sort of thing. Your mind doesn't do that. It's your body personality. Your mood's greatly improved. Oh, that's awesome. So sometimes our energy because we're much bigger beings than these tiny bodies that we're in. But you guys all know that, right? I mean, that's what makes us all be able to connect to things and feel emotions and empathy for other people, right? Because we're bigger than this little body. So sometimes we feel tired because our mind can only equate the relaxation state we go into with this energy as sleep. Isn't that cool? So we go, oh, I'm feeling tired because this must be sleep. I'm in deep relaxation. But... So our mind goes, oh, I'm tired. But it's awesome. And it, your energy will increase as you become more and more aware of it. So it's nothing bad. It's always good. Leah, I loved your painted rocks, okay? I think you need to do a video on painting rocks. I loved it. Did you guys see it? She posted it in our Facebook group, and it was awesome. It was awesome. So sometimes that's what happens. So And it's all good. You know, it's just you're allowing your body to relax. You're allowing your body to relax and receive what you need, whatever that is. And, you know, it changes all the time. You guys, like, energy work is like taking a bath. you got to do it on a regular basis. Like, you can't just take one bath and be clean for the rest of your life, right? And you also take your energy into all different places. So sometimes, like, haven't you ever gone into a place where it makes you feel good? You're like, wow, this place, I want to come back. The energy's so good. Haven't you equally done the same thing where you've gone somewhere and you've gone, there's something creepy about this place. I don't want to come back. 
I love your rocks too, Leah. They're awesome. So, you know, your energy is always evolving and changing. You're all, when you think a positive, okay, thoughts and words create an energy, and they all have an energy onto their, their own. So if you want more prosperity in your life, you have to focus on thanking the spirit or energy of prosperity, right? If you want more love in your life, you want to thank and you want to give gratitude for that which you want in your life. It comes with gratitude every time. It just does. I don't know what this is going to look like. I don't, I don't know. I just kind of liked it. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, so when you put, oh, I like it. When you put positive thoughts into your energy bank, into your collective bank of energy, it raises your energy level. Just the same way, like, you haven't, don't you all have an aunt or a cousin that's a Debbie Downer? But, like, every time they talk to you, they complain, 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 and then you're like, oh, my God, I don't want to talk to them. Or you see they're calling you on the phone, and you're like, <laughs> you're, you're like, I'm not going to answer that phone call. So we all have the ability at any given time to change our energy, and we need to constantly be working on it the same way we take a shower all the time. And that's why when you receive in love and you give in love, you're telling your body personality, you're giving like your, your telephone, you know, you're giving like your energy telephone call out and saying, I'm receiving love and I'm giving love. I'm receiving love and I'm giving love. I'm receiving love and I'm giving love. Okay, what did you say, Lucinda? I'm sorry. I understand that. So Linda said, Lucinda said she was in a car wreck and that she had to learn how to become a partner with her pain instead of seeing it as an enemy. Lucinda, you know what? Everything works like that. When you can partner with it and learn to love it, it doesn't mean that you want it when you say you learn to love it, but you just love it up. It, it, dis it disintegrates and dissipates in love. We all have people in our lives that are a Debbie Downer, okay? And they're here to remind us, right, that we don't have to be that way. We don't have to be that way. We don't have to act that way. We don't have to, and, and I refuse to. Even with my ex-husband, as not nice as he's being, I could have jumped on the Debbie Downer bandwagon and just said, you know, I mean, I did tell, put it this way, I did tell him to his face that he was being a jerk. I did. I said, you're being a real jerk. And I call him. He doesn't talk to me. He won't call me, but I call him because I know when I call him that he and I have been friends for 30 years. You know, just because he has a new girlfriend doesn't mean that, and trust me, I don't want him back. It's not that at all. But you know, it's like you respect people as a friend. You know, I know eventually he'll come back around because he can't hold out. He can't hold out that long. You know what? The coolest thing is, is if you love somebody and something enough, they will eventually love you back. It may not be the way you want to be loved, but they can't resist it. No one can resist love, right? No one can resist love. Bye, Mary Lou. I'm glad you came to join us for a minute or two. And I hope you girls are making along and having some fun. Having some fun. So. I like making altered books too, Lucinda. You know what? I love crafting. You guys, crafting really sees me through a lot of my stress. Does it see you guys through a lot of your stress? Because I can just be here. Well, I'm glad you're still here, Mary Kate. We're happy you're here. <coughs> I made paint. I love making painting papers. You're like a little bit addictive, right, Lucinda? I'm drinking my tea. I'm drinking my green tea. My obsession with my Urban Mate green tea. That's my drink of choice lately, is my green tea.
You're still working, Don. Well, I'm glad you're here with us. I don't usually stream this early for you guys. I mean, I love you, Ben. I'm sorry you guys are exhausted over the storm. I it, it, it I can't even imagine really the release that you guys are feeling. And you know, I'm sure you're feeling an amazing release because you know it was really intense. We all have to let go of the stress. You know what I tell my stress, and trust me, lately it's been a lot. Hi, Lori. I say, stress, I love you so much, but I'm ready for a little vacay, okay? Stress, I love you, but I need a vacay from you because this is not working for me. This stress thing ain't working for me. You know, so you got to work with what you got, though. You know, you got to put yourself... You gotta find like a way to make yourself feel better initially, even if it's just like, oh, I'm gonna watch some mindless television, or I'm gonna watch some, you know, something that takes you outside of yourself. Hi, Cheshire. I love you, Bet. Sleep is a great healer, but not everybody wants to sleep. Because if when you're in a state of like stress, right, you're like, or thinking you may drown because water may be coming in your house, sleeping is like you, your subconscious mind is like still awake, you know, not like not letting you rest. And that's normal, natural, normal, but it doesn't make it any easier, right? Doesn't make it any easier. But what's really cool about all of you guys is that you guys have been on my weird crafty journey, my meditation and art. Meditation and art, art is a meditation. So when you guys are making your painting papers, you are meditating. It is a form of meditation. Art is a form of meditation. It really is. I've almost done enough to start making some painter to actually start folding some. So that'll make me, that'll be kind of exciting to start folding some. And if you guys have never made these library pockets with me, they are so fun. They are so fun. At least I think they're fun. Okay, if you're not a paper crafter, you probably do not find it fun. If you, but I find it really fun. And I put them. I make greeting cards and put them in there. Like, I'm all. I'm all about the tuck spots and the papers and the like, things like that. I don't know why I'm like all into that, but I am, and that's okay. So, do you guys have any big plans for this? It's a holiday weekend for those of you that are um, not from the U.S. It's it's always a holiday here, so. I'm making library pockets, Leah. I'm obsessed with making painting papers and library pockets. I'm obsessed. And if you have a corner rounder, which I do, but gosh, you guys, it's in a box in the garage. It's like... Anyway, um, my goal for the next, like, two weeks is to get my craft room, like, out of the garage. Get my box out of the garage. You know, like, get my, get myself out of the garage. Like, focus on out of the garage, which I'm excited about. You know? Because if I can get my stuff out of the garage, well, I got to, I got some new shelves, which I'm, I'm excited about, too. If you guys hear some crash and bang, it's hottie out there. He's like cutting down some more bananas. What did Alta just say that I missed? No, you can make these patterns with anything. The, the jelly plate just gives you, you could probably make it if you just put it on a piece of plastic. It's this that I'm using. It's it's that pot scrubber. Remember somebody told me? It's just the teeth. You could cut these teeth in a piece of cardboard and probably do the same thing. Can you see these teeth? That's all it is. You could use any... You don't have to have a jelly plate. Okay, you don't. You don't. I don't know if I... Do you, any, do you guys get that foam that's in your um, vegetables? You know, the bottom, the foam tray? I told you guys to save some. 
And then my daughter threw all mine away. I'll try to get some more. You can do the same technique with that. You could paint, you could brayer your paint on, spread your paint on, and then you could use any sort of, you could even make this, make this out of, um, I don't know, we could probably make one out of cardboard. I um, make one out of cardboard and then you can, all right, I have a few more and then I'm done and then I'll start folding and it'll be exciting. At least I, it'll be exciting for me. I don't know why making library pockets is so exciting for me, guys, but it is. It's so ridiculous, but I love it. So silly. Alta told Fiona that you heal when you rest. Oh, that's, it's true. Your body, when your body can get, that's why you, some of you fall asleep when you're doing energy work here with me. So it's true. So, you know, your body does heal. Your body is an amazing healer. It will heal itself all on its own. its own. But you have to get yourself in a state where you allow yourself to heal. You know, that's often why doctors put people in comas. Like, you know, like when you watch or know about doctor, Western medicine, I mean, which, you know, you don't need to be put in a coma, but many times we don't allow ourselves to heal in a Many times when people have really traumatic injuries and stuff like that, how they put you put you in a coma. They're not put you. They're putting you in a coma so you rest, and you can. Put you in a coma so that you can rest and your body can rejuvenate and heal. I guarantee you, if you would even spend. 10 minutes a day in a state of meditation or relaxation where you just allow yourself to be, whatever that is, okay, it will, you will see vast improvements in your mental health. Like, you won't be as stressed out so much. Trust me, I work on myself all day long. I don't do work on you guys and do stuff with you that I myself am not already doing on myself. I do it on myself all the time. I do it on myself all the time. And sometimes it works better than others, you know? Sometimes, but when I allow myself to get into that state of uh, real zen or whatever, you know, sometimes I can be in it all day long. Sometimes I can be in it for days. And then sometimes I'm not. Like, sometimes no matter what I do, I'm, like, in agitation. Can any of you guys relate to that, being in agitation? I am almost done. And then we can start, gee, we can start folding, folding, folding. For those of you that don't make journals, you can use these in greeting cards. You can use them in scrapbooking. You can use them in other things. You don't just have to use them. And you don't just have to use them in junk journaling. But what I, or if you smash book, you can use them. Or if you have a planner, you can use them. If you have a traveler's notebook. Once you know how to make these little pockets, you can make them out of all sorts of things. You don't have to make it. You make it out of beautiful scrapbook paper for those of you that, are, that you know, don't want to make it out of junk mail or book pages like me. You can make it out of scrapbook paper. You can make it out of, I don't know. There's there any kind of, as long as it's paper, you can make it out of it. Yeah, Fiona, you know what? That's why it's like taking a bath. Fiona's saying she's been meditating for 14 years and she still forgets it. You know what? That's why energy work and meditation is like taking a bath. You got to do it every day, Right. And when you're having particularly bad days, think of that as like, okay, I've just gone out in the yard and I've sweated all day. I need to do something about this, this sweaty, stinky self I'm, I'm, I am right this minute. And then you're going to demonstrate journal making at the State Fair, Mary Kay? How awesome is that? I love it. Love, love, love it. 
I can imagine, Fiona, I can imagine that medita meditation, meditation helps everyone. Meditation helps everyone. So you guys, you know, you guys know I have three children of my own and Potty has two boys, right? And so we've seen and been through just about everything with our own children, right? But, you know, your children's friends are like, you know, they're, you're like their surrogate parent to them. Even when you don't even want to be, right? They come over. So <laughs> my oldest daughter, she had this one friend. They're still friends to this day. They've been friends for 20 some odd years, okay? What is, the little girl is just, she's very difficult. She's always been very difficult. She was, she's difficult for her parents. If you ask her parents, they'll tell, they would tell you straight out she's difficult. Um, when she was little, she used to come to my house. She would do, like, just the most destructive things, you know, or I'd have them in the park. And I lived in New York City. So, you know, being in the park in New York City, you can't, you have to be able to listen. And she was definitely not a listener. Like, she didn't want to listen. So, then I, when she would do something really, like, just, that she was going to harm herself if she continued like standing on the top of a huge jungle gym and you know just all kinds of crazy stuff she did I used to say if you do it again I'm going to make you sit down with me and so I used to make her meditate with me and at first she would be like oh no no like her, her mother would, her mother actually used it as a threatening tech a threatening uh, a, th a threatening thing like when she would do something really bad she's like I'm going to call Shelly and she's going to come over, and you're going to have to sit and meditate with her. And she'll be like, no, I'll be good, I'll be good. Well, she's a grown woman now, and she says to me, and she's so sweet, guys. She said to me that I'm the only person in her life, aside from her mother, that never judged her, that who's punished, like when she would do really horrible things, and she did much worse than I'm even telling you. She would say, you're the only person that would ever take the time to sit down and talk things out with me. And make me sit down and meditate. And she said, do you know that seeing me through graduate school, her, the fact that she can meditate. She said, you know what? I can meditate now because you, <laughs> she goes, because at some point you're, you know, even if you don't want to come to the realization that you're going to have to, she said, when you would make me sit there for like five minutes and I would give her like meditation techniques, like focusing on something like, okay, focus on the pink ball. It's where you like see a pink ball in your heart and, you know, just say, focus on the pink ball, watch it glow, watch it get bigger. Watch it get bigger. Okay, now we're going to sit here, and I'm going to count, and, and I'm going to count to 100, and I'm going to watch the pink ball get bigger. And, you know, anyway, I taught her meditation techniques. Obviously, it was for my own self-benefit, too, because she was like, she was very difficult, you know? So, meditation works, you guys. It does. You know, meditation and prayer are the same thing. Do you guys know that? Hi, Kathy. We're all good, I think. Hi, Crafty Creations. You lost this and you clicked on the wrong thing. Hey, it happens. What are you going to do? I'm using a baby wipe to clean off my jelly plate and to clean my hands. And I'm going to save those because aren't they going to be cool painty papers? Like, look, isn't that going to be the coolest painty paper? I don't know what. I'm, maybe I'll make a flower out of it. I don't know. Maybe I'll sew it and make a ruffle. You know what? I've had the same thing. Fiona, lately the internet has like definitely like I think had it out for me in some way because I was watching something the other day or listening to something because I'm always doing it while I'm doing something else and it just I didn't even realize that I had lost the connection. I thought they were just being quiet for a few minutes. Listen to I don't like black licorice. I like tea. Like, is it was it called? What's the what's black licorice's thing? Anise? Is that how you say it? Or anise? But I don't like black licorice. I'm sorry, I like. It's probably one of the only things I don't like. Okay, I'm in love with this tiny jelly plate. So if you guys are going to venture into jelly plate them, this is definitely one that you could do a lot with. You could even use your stamps on it. All right, for those of you that want to make uh, library pockets with me, get your paper. And if you didn't make painting papers, it's okay. You don't have to. You can just make it out of anything you want. 
You love black licorice? Yeah, it is a lever. It is a lever hate kind of thing. I don't know why I don't like it. I don't. I really don't like it. I also don't like fennel, which I think it has a similar licorice taste. I'm not crazy for fennel. But and isn't there like isn't is it zambuca that's a black licorice liqueur? Black is the only way to go. You guys are so funny. What are we? Is this like a licorice comparison? Okay, so get your painting papers. Get your painted papers, the ones you just made. And we're going to make some library pockets. Okay, now the reason I painted on the top of one and the bottom of the other, other is because I'm going to fold it. Okay, so this is like so easy. Ready? Okay, you're going to fold it up. Like, I guess this is about a third of the page. You decide the depth you want of your pocket. It really doesn't matter. There's no rules to it. And fold it up. Turn it and fold the sides down about, I don't know, this one, you can eyeball it. This one is about, I don't know, half an inch. But it's just because of my page. You can make them bigger or smaller. The cool thing about this is you can make these pockets any to fit any size page. Okay? Now unfold it. All right now you're going to need to cut it. So this is what you've done so far. Fold it up a third and folded the sides down. Hi, Scotty! <laughs> Hate is a very strong word, Susan. You can just say, I dislike it. <laughs> oh, Scotty. We love you, Scotty. I love you, Scotty. I can't, I like Anna's tea, but I'm not crazy about fennel. I'm not, I, I, I don't know. I think it's a love-hate thing, you know? Hi, Jennifer. Okay, so here we go. Fold it up a third. It's about a third, right? And then fold the sides back, depending upon how wide you want your pocket. Okay, see it like this. Now you're going to unfold it. Now you got some cutting to do, sisters. Okay, you're going to, where you've scored it, where you've brought, where you've brought the third of the page up, you're going to cut that there. You're going to cut across there. And then you're going to cut across this side. All right, these pieces are going to be folded on the inside of your pocket. Now, sometimes I cut, if the paper's super thick, sometimes I cut that. On this one, it's not. I'm just need to find a glue stick. On this one, it is not. Okay, so then you need to just put your glue stick on it and I'll do a couple of them. I'm going to do a bunch of them. So if you're not getting it, don't worry. It will continue. I will continue with it. Okay. So this is what it looks like. And the reason why you need to fold those pieces on the inside is so they make like a gusset so that you have something to put, you know, so your pocket's not flush. Okay. Now it looks like this. Now I like to cut these just because I like the, how, how the, it lays better on a page. But you don't have to. Not necessary. Now you're going to glue these down to itself. And that is as easy as it gets, friends. Now, you can, if you have a corner rounder, I think they look really great if you round the corners. You don't need to have a corner rounder. You can just measure it and cut it yourself or eyeball it and cut it yourself. But you don't have to. It's up to you whether you want them square or whether you want them cut. And voila, there's your library pocket. Now what's super fun about it is sometimes what I like to do if I'm going to send just like somebody some happy mail, I just stuff this little pocket. You can just write a little note on it and put it in the mail. <laughs> Susan says they sneak those fennel seeds on pizza and they catch you by surprise. Hi, Carla. Hi, Elaine. Okay, so that's pocket number one. And you can just keep making them. And you can make them any size. Like So we can make a smaller one. Here, I'll make this one with a smaller one make this one a smaller one so say your book is smaller so or you want it you want it to fit a different way you can decide the size of all of it so say you have a, a much smaller area for your library pocket to fit just have at it you know it doesn't there's no there is no rules in pocket making, in my world. Maybe there are rules in other people's lives in pocket making. 
Okay, so this one's just going to be a tall, skinny one. You want to cut it on the side and cut it on the side. You can fold that in and glue it. Okay. And what's cool about it is that once you know how to make these, you're going to be like, oh, I could just put a little pocket in there. Sometimes when I make like birthday cards or whatever I'm going to send to somebody, I make these little pockets and put like whatever the treat is, the birthday, if it's a gift card or money or whatever, I put it in a little pocket like this. Now, what you may have to do is, you, can you see right here, this one, even though it's folded down, the page is thick or I didn't fold it totally flush, so I may want to cut that off before I glue it down. So that's up to you, you know? It is... But if you're going to do it on one side, do it on another. Do it on both sides. And only you will know it's there. Nobody else will. Okay? But you need this gusset. You need that piece of... I'm going to put in a flu on this side. You need this little, whatever you want to call it, this little extra folded piece in. to give. That's what gives you the room inside your pockets. To stuff your pockets with stuff. So this one's going to be a little short, a little smaller than the one we made earlier. I mean, longer, it's taller and thinner. But you can do this with any kind of page. So if you guys have magazines that you like, love the images of, magazine covers make really fun pockets for your junk journal. Or National Geographic, those pages are so thick. I love them. And um, just, you know, anything. You could scra obviously scrapbooking paper. But if you don't have the budget or you don't want to waste your scrapbooking paper, you want to save it for something, you know, use what you have. Use your magazines, use your... So, look, here's a tall, skinny one. And now I can cut it off. That one's a tall, skinny one, but say I just said, hey, I want to cut it off. So I want it to be smaller. So just cut it off. There you go. So I have a small one, and then you say you want to round the corners. If you don't have a corner rounder, round the corners. Not a big deal. There you go. Isn't that cool? Hi, Vicky. Did you feed your horse yet? We just want to know. Did you feed your horse? Now, if you have stamps, this makes really... Let me see if I'm going to find a stamp pad. I did not... I think that every time I sit down here, I'm like, oh, I have everything I need. And then, of course, I'm sitting down here, I'm like, oh, I want that. Of course, I don't have it. I don't think that stamp pad works. I brought my paint tubs over here, but... I don't think there's any, I have like, I don't have my normal stamping stuff. Where is it? Where did I put it? Right, I have this green stamp pad. I don't know if it's going to show up on there, but we'll see. The green stamp pad, but I have this like cool flower stamp right here. It's dinner time in the country for all creatures. Okay, Vic, we know you did. Now we know you fed your horse. <laughs> okay, see? So see, you can just stamp your pockets. Isn't that cool? Just stamp on top of your... You guys are so funny. The wildlife demanded food upon your walking, uh, upon your waking. Oh, gosh, Scotty. So, you know, you can, not only can you paint on these, but you can come back and you can stamp on them or do whatever you want. It's not like there's a, a hard and fast rule for it. Just have some fun. Have some fun, sisters. Have some fun. Okay, so I have two pockets down and a whole pile to go. Two pockets down and a pile to go. I put up my little jelly plate. I love this little jelly plate. You need to write the lady that sent it to me and just tell her how much I love it. It's fabulous. Fabulous. You know, um, did you guys see in our group I posted one of the ladies in another group, she formed a group. I, I'm not a big proponent. I like our group and I like the sanctity of it, but there are some times when I think it's like really good to to spread the wealth of people that are interested in things. And um, 
there's a lady in one of the other groups that and I posted in there. I think it's called Crafts for Paws. And they're rescuing a lot of dogs that are homeless in Houston right now. The organization itself is in Dallas. And they, re they primarily specialize in rescuing special needs animals, you know. And so she is having, they sell craft supplies and that is, and they're personal craft supplies. So it's people like you and me that want to downsize that just want to make a difference. So if you guys wanted to go over to that Facebook group, it's called Craft for Paws. And I'll put it in the, uh, in the description box below, but it's, I linked it in our Facebook group. I think they're having a special sale today. They rescued a hundred dogs and from the, and she said there was only four of them and it's a nonprofit. They don't make any money. All their money goes directly to the, nobody's paid. It's a volunteer organization and every, but all their money goes to whatever the special needs of the dogs are. And they're all kinds of different things. So if you go on there, they're having a craft sale. That's the only reason why I was thinking about it because one of you guys mentioned, cause Alta just mentioned about her brother rescuing a poodle. So, and you guys know my little rescue dog, my little Charlie pup. <laughs> Vicki, you're eating what? You're supposed to say crock pot roast, but it's a mill. <laughs> no, you're right. I am feeling so much better, Fiona. You know what I think it was? You know, I don't know that I'll, I don't know that I'll win my case, but I was kind of defeated, you know, before I was, I wasn't totally defeated. Of course, I try to give myself an hope for everything, but I was kind of like, even though I love living here in Hawaii, having, knowing that you have a home that's your home to go to, you know, if something happened or whatever, I am feeling better. I am definitely feeling better. Hi, Maria. You finally get to chat. Well, we're happy you're here. You had to change your color. You kind of had to change your culinary skills. Vic, why is that? Why is that? Okay, this is pocket number three. Pocket number three. Sorry, I didn't put enough glue on it, girls. Make sure you put enough glue. Why did your culinary skills change? I would like some of your pot roast. Even though I'm not eating, I haven't eaten meat in I don't know how long, but I would like some of your pot roast. I can't say this. To I haven't eaten red meat. I've eaten chicken and fish and, and other stuff. Come on now, dinner's ready. I'm ready. You know, Miss Vic, if I live halfway close to you, you know my behind would drive up for some good cooking. My sister and I were talking about that the other day. We were talking about our grandmother and hurricanes because, you know, we, we're from right where Bet and, and Susan live. We were talking about, like, you know, hurricanes... <laughs> They're, they're just, if you live in Texas, it's just, there's a hurricane season, you know? And we were talking about our grandmother, and when the hurricane season would come, or when a big storm would come, she would run in there, and she had a big old gas stove. The first thing she would do is she would cook, like, I can't even tell you, like, all kinds of stuff. Like, she would cook, cook, cook. She would cook all kinds of food. She would fry some chicken. She would cook, she would make all kinds of biscuits and stuff like that she would just cook a lot of stuff that you could eat over several days that you didn't have to heat up so she would cook so we were talking about all that you've been vegan for two years nancy awesome good for you i i was macrobiotic that is that's an intense lifestyle for a long time I used to have terrible food allergies, so I probably still do, but I just don't need any of that stuff anymore. But way back when, when you couldn't even really be macrobiotic, can I tell you, people stopped inviting me to their homes. 
because <laughs> of my weird dietary things. I used to bring my own food when I would go to people's houses because, like, why not? I didn't want to miss out on being with people, but I would. Hi, Beth. Good for you, Cheshire. Good for you. You know, not everybody can function on um, the same type of diet. So whatever works for you, I say go for it. Whatever works. Whatever works. <laughs> Sarita says in South Africa, you will hear chicken being referred to as a vegetable. <laughs> oh my goodness, Sarita. That's so funny. That is so funny. Oh no, that is really funny. You know, Sarita, I'm from Texas and, you know, I don't know. I mean, maybe there's a lot of vegetarians and stuff like that now, but not when I grew up. Not when I grew up. At least not in the part of Texas I'm from. It's 2.30 in the morning. Where are you, Maria? We're happy you're here. But Susan says she's so hungry, she would eat a vegan and a vegetarian with with the roast beef. Oh my goodness, you were so funny. You know what? Vicki, it's right. Not everything works for everybody. You know, you have to like do what works for you. You have to work. You have to do what works for you. Have you ever read that book, Eat Right for Your Type? It's quite interesting, actually. It's where this guy did, this doctor did a study about your blood type and what works for your blood type. And it's, it's pretty accurate, you know? And it talks about, you know, ancestral history. And not to say that you can't develop your own, like you couldn't be whatever ancestral history it's saying should be a meat eater and say, oh, I'm not going to do that and be a vegetarian. I mean, it's your choice, but it's kind of interesting, though, if you read it, if you ever read that book. It's an old book. It's been out for a long time. Have you guys ever read it, Eat Right for Your Type? It was, like, popular, was it popular in, like, the 90s or the 80s? But it made me aware of, like, I had such weird food allergies that it made me aware of um, my own personal uh, struggles with food as far as like how it made me feel when I eat it and what I should, what would, what possibly might work for me and you know it did but you know I think, it, I think it's all in where you are for you. I understand I love beans too and they, yeah, they can make you feel better if, not, if it's not Okay, Nancy wrote me, and instead of gluing down the big flap on the back, you could weigh and glue it down on the page for a double pocket. You can, absolutely. But I'm sending these in, in a journaling kit, so I'm, I'm going to send them as fit, finished. You know, but you can, absolutely. Why not? No rules, my dear. No rules. You make it up as you go along. Totally, you can glue it down as a, as a pocket in your journal. A second pocket. You can totally do that. Why not? You can still glue it down as a second pocket if you don't glue the top. If you just glue the sides, and you can still glue it down as a second pocket. You can still do it. But I like making these, and I make them all the time. And I use them all the time, and I send them out in Happy Mail. I just enjoy making them because, well, you guys know me and my altered book fetish, right? So, I, like, I have so many altered book things that I have to, like, deal with all the extra pages and stuff that I have, right? So, you know me. Love these. Love book pages. Your, your taste buds love pasta and bread, but your body loves protein. I get it. I totally get it. The name of the book is called Eat Right for Your Type. It's a really old book. 
It's a spring day where you are, Sarita. Oh, that's so awesome. I want to say the book is from the 90s, you guys. And I can't remember who it's written by. I think it's written by a man and his dad. But I honestly, I don't even, how did we even get on the subject, you guys? So funny. Maria writes, she's still in Holiday Village, but soon she'll be crafting. You'll be here with me? Maria, where are you? You're in Holiday Village. Where's Holiday Village? In South Africa? Bye, Dawn. Tell Leah we love her. Tell her thank her for stopping by. We love her. I look forward to seeing more of her painting rocks. They're awesome. Her painting rocks are fabulous. Fabuloso. Fabulous, fabulous. So I just want you guys to know that... Making the craft, hanging out and crafting with you guys is one of my favorite things. One of my favorites, okay? I have lots of favorite things, but this is one of my most favorite. You are a personal chef, Vicki? Oh, wow. That's awesome. Um, Cheshire in our Facebook group, um, Dawn's daughter, Leah, did the most beautiful painted rock. She, she's a really good artist. She does all kinds of cool stuff, but she painted this. It's, it's really exquisite. And I was like, wow. I can't remember what, what was the occasion. I don't remember, but Dawn's gone now. So we'll have, she probably posted it in the group, like what she did it for. I don't remember. You guys, I can only remember people's art. I don't always remember why they do it. I love painted rocks too. Like who wouldn't like to find a painted rock? I think finding a painted rock is like, that's like amazing, right? Finding a painted rock. Or getting one as a gift. Some people get really super fancy. Hers was amazingly fancy, okay? I think mine, if I was painting rocks, it'd be a little bit more primitive. Because I don't need any more stuff to collect your paint. <laughs> you have nine to hide, Cheshire? Oh, that's so awesome. You were a personal chef for 15 years, Vic. That's awesome. No wonder you're like such an amazing like chef, cook, whatever. You like that's 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 fabulous. I love it. Love, love, love it. Love it. Love it. I've been a personal chef for, okay, how old am I? <laughs> I've been a personal chef for, at least, at least 30 years. My own personal chef. Does that count? <laughs> ah. Yes, you can move the larger. Yes, you can move. You live in Greece, Maria. Awesome. You permanently live in Athens. Oh, that's awesome. So Vicky's saying, can I move the top of the... Can I move the top one... What are you asking? Can I make the pocket bigger this way? Is that what you're asking? I don't know. I don't understand the question, Vic. 
You can you can make it any way you want. I mean, the whole idea of a library pocket or a library style pocket is that it just has, you know, it's just a flush to the page type of thing that you could do. You could leave these back back down, and you could actually accordion fold it, and then you would have like a gusseted pocket if you wanted it to rise up from your in the inside of your journal. You've been putting out painted rocks, Frida. Awesome. Bye, Lori. See you soon. See, maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be making these little, like, personal, I guess, ornaments or something. I don't know exactly what you want to call them. Is that what you were asking, Vicki? I don't know what you were asking. Maria, you were the one that asked the question about calamari, so let me explain it to you. We sent you that when I posted the video. So calamari has nothing to do with, with crafting. But the KonMari method, written by, it's a book called The Art of Tidying Up. I think isn't that the name of the book? And the book, The Art of Tidying Up, gives you, 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 you keep, it's called the KonMari method because her name is Maria Kondo. And so they call it KonMari. In Japan, they use your last name first. And anyway, they shortened it to KonMari. So she has this method called the KonMari method. So I was talking about how I was trying to do that cleaning, organizing method for myself. And Susan, our lovely Susan, in the middle of this whole conversation we're talking about, like, because it's a whole step in a process. You go, what sparks joy? They have this whole thing. You do your closet first, then you do books and paper, then you do um, your kitchen. Anyway, it's about really enjoying and keeping only what sparks joy. So I'm explaining to them how I'm failing at the KonMari method because I came, the first part was no problem. Cleaning out my closets was no problem. But the part where I totally failed was the part where I asked, I um, I couldn't let go of my books. So Susan suddenly asks, okay, what envelope has stamping on it? Susan suddenly asks, what is calamari? And I said, what do you, and then I'm like, squid. Like we're talking like now, like random stuff comes up, right? And I said, squid is calamari. And then she says to me, um, and I don't even realize that she's thinking that I'm talking this whole time. She's talking about the KonMari. She thinks I'm talking about squid. But really what I was talking about was the KonMari method. So that's why we were all laughing when you said it. What does calamari have to do with crafting? Absolutely nothing. But the KonMari method is an organizational method for all areas of your life. But now we call it calamari in this group. Does that make sense? I hope that helped a little. Okay, Vicki wants to know what, wait, she wants to see the envelope that has a stamping yellow on it. It's not an envelope, it's just a pocket, library pocket. Although you could make it an envelope, you could bend the, the top down, but it's a library pocket that I cut off and I just stamped on it, on top of it. It's the same thing I'm doing here. It's the same method. I just took the same book page. My whole, the whole point of me doing it is like, look, all of these are the same size. You started out with all of these at the same size book page. They're all the same size book page, but do you see how many different sizes you can make? That's why I was telling you, you can make any size you want from any book page. Scotty says that just an FYI, every dollar donated to the Red Cross for Harvey victims, they will multiply by two. That's awesome. So if anyone was thinking of sending any, any money, Walmart will? Walmart will match the every dollar? Is that what you're saying? Walmart will match, will, will send to, you know, it's so funny that we're talking about them. How do you still work for them? Not Walmart itself, but he used to work for their bank and he used to live in Bentonville, Arkansas for a little while. And we were talking about people that it was right after that, um, that fight, you know, the Mayweather fight. And I was saying, because, you know, they were projecting how much money Mayweather made. And I was just saying, you know, how money is so disproportionate here, right? 
and someone like Mayweather can make like three hundred ninety-five million dollars or more. That was the estimated amount that he made, right? Three hundred ninety-five, and how like a school teacher doesn't make hardly anything. So we were just talking about the disproportionate thing, and that how if someone like Mayweather, when they won all that money, would turn around and donate it to a third world country. This was before the hurricane, right? Or, or and then I, we continue the conversation. If, if they would donate it to a country, how much different? it would create jobs and different things in people's life. Like what if you donated that 300 and whatever he made to a clean water initiative, a worldwide clean water initiative. Just having clean water would do, do you re I'm sorry, Maria. So just creating a, 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 a clean water initiative, how just having clean water in many third world countries would just change a lot of things or mosquito nets or, stuff like that and then the next day I found out after this whole conversation and we were talking about the the Waltons the the people that own Walmart because Blake knew them really well and he was saying that you know they're not really boisterous but that it, like they don't stand around saying look at what I donated but that they're very generous you know and and he was saying you know like all the things that they do behind the scenes and uh, monies that they donate for amazing things and that, that that even though they may be politically on one side of the fence that they do donate all the way around to everyone so I think it's awesome that donate that Walmart is pledging two dollars for every one dollar that is um, donated to the Red Cross and then I also think I'm not a big proponent of fighting at all in any way shape or form but then Mayweather donated 200 million dollars to Houston and it made me feel like amazing, you know, it made me feel like to the flood victims. I don't know how it's getting dispersed, but it just shows you that, you know, the comment I was making is when you have so much money that you don't need any more money, you know, it's almost like, it's like, you know, like when you have too much food and you don't eat it all, it all goes bad. It was like, we were talking about that. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Vic. Yes. How are you? They're generous. They're very generous. Blake knew he used to work for the bank for them. He used to work for Arvis, which is the bank, which is the, Wal the Walmart bank. They're very generous. And he knew them really well. And he, they were always donating. He was like saying they donate to things that are not even politically correct on their own agenda. Like he said, most of them are Republicans, right? But that they, that, um, the mother, the mother that I just passed away, the Walton mother used to give toward, um, she used to donate to Planned Parenthood, which was definitely not on their Republican agenda. She was a big proponent of that, and she was a big proponent of uh, education for women, and just a lot of really positive, amazing things that makes you feel even better shopping there. So I'm not a big box store girl. So because, look. Every one of these is a different size, and you can cut them to fit your pages. You can cut them to fit whatever you're making. And you can go back and stamp on them. You can also stack them one inside the other, which is kind of fun to do as well. You know, you can, like, make your whole pocket of, you can make a pocket of, a pocket of library pockets. You can make a, a whole thing of library pockets, which is cool. I'm not a big one to want to talk about politics, but I have to say that I think our country right now really needs all of us to just send each other as much love as possible, no matter what our political agendas are. Even those of us that have no political agendas. <laughs> are you tired, Bridgeline? It is late there. He donated $200 million. Wasn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? You like the yellow one or the one with the flower? I was going to use this on my jelly plate and I didn't do it, you guys. I wasn't focused on it. This is a really fun thing if you do get a jelly plate or even stamp, use it as a stamp. Somebody give me a big old plastic uh, tablecloth. I was going to use it. Maria looked up crafting and calamari all morning. I'm sorry, Maria. You can blame Susan. I swear it gave me the best laugh, though. The time it happened, I think I was having a really bad day or whatever. I don't know. You know, I don't come on and tell you guys when my days are bad. 
I mean, sometimes you can sense it, but I try to pep myself up because who wants to come and listen to somebody when they're a Debbie Downer? I don't. I do not. Okay. The calamari truth. You laughed a lot with the calamari truth. Oh, but the best part was that I, how long were you thinking we were talking about squid, Susan? <laughs> were you like going like, what is wrong with her? She's like gluing stuff or what, I don't, what was I making tags or something? You made your first jelly prints? Oh, Frana, are you addicted? I'm addicted. You know what? There's not a lot of craft supplies that I would say that you should have, but I think it's really fun if you have a jelly plate. It is really fun. Well, I'm going to be pocket ready. I'm going to be pocket set. You guys, these Tim, Tom Clancy novels work great. You can usually get them for a quarter at a thrift store. They come with a lot of pages. A lot of pages. Do you love it, Franna? Is it fun? I love it. It's like addictive for me. I I adore jelly printing. In fact, Brenda calls me Jelly Shelly. You're waiting for your jelly plate to arrive. Oh, good for you, Lisa. You know, make a small one, Susan. You, they don't have to be big. Make a small one. See if you like it. You know, it's fun. It's They're really fun, right? And you know what? You can use them as stamps, too. You can stamp your images from your stamps, from your regular. You do have to use a, I don't know if, you know, I don't know if you can use a water-based ink on it. I mean, you can use anything on it. Just test it. I wouldn't use oil paint on it, though. I would not use oil paint. You could, but you have a lot of cleaning up to do. And, it's, and it smells on top of it all. Because of me, you got a jelly plate. I'm addicted to it, Lisa. I'm sorry. You know, I don't think there's a lot of things that... You found two of your favorite authors at the Dollar Tree. Good for you, Vicki. There's not a lot of things... If you cut a jelly plate, you don't cut a jelly plate. Why would you? Oh, you mean cutting it into a shape? You just mold it into a shape. I mean, you could use scissors, but why don't you? It, why don't you use a gelatin mold? Why don't you use something the size of the plate you want? I mean, I'm sure you could. If you make your own jelly plate, you can totally cut it into any shape you want, and then, or you can use cookie molds or cookie cutters or. Um, or you can, you know, put them into gelatin molds or butter molds or whatever those, you know, what I'm talking about, those like Tupperware style or put them into, you know, plastic pans or whatever to make your, or even a glass baking pan to make your, to allow it to set up. You can cut it, but the cool thing about if you make your own, I would save all the bits if you cut it off and remelt it and put it into something else. You have a five by seven you're thinking about cutting up. You know, that I don't know. Google it. I haven't cut mine. I don't know. If you have a 5 by 7 one, you don't have to cut it. Just use it as it is. Just just put less ink on it, you know, and it can make it smaller. You've had one for years, but you haven't, you haven't used, you haven't used it. It's really fun. Once you do it, You'll be addicted. My favorite thing to jelly print on are magazine pages. I won't lie. I love, especially if you do like really dark magazine images or pages and then you, you know, put white on your jelly plate and, you know, pull a fork or something through it to make a cool pattern. I like that. 5x7 five is a good size. I have a 5x5. Five five. I like it. Or is it might be a 6x6. Six and I have this one, and then somebody gave me a round one, but I and I've used it. I like it too. But today I just thought usually the jelly plate takes up the whole table here, you know, when I'm working on it. Thanks, Susan. All right, you lurkers, say hi. Everybody, say hi. Who's out there? Who's out there? Who's out there? Say howdy, as Brenda would tell you. Say howdy. I love making these library pockets, you guys. I love it. 
And now you can make it out of really nice scrapbooking paper too. It would be nice if you gave me a thumbs up if you're enjoying yourself. I appreciate it. I appreciate it very much. So these will be some of the pockets that go into my junk journaling kits. So that is for those of you that are thinking about it. These will be some of the little pockets that go in my junk journaling kit. that are in my Etsy shop. You guys, I feel almost relieved about this whole thing. Hi, Kara, how are you? Welcome, welcome, we're happy you're here. Oh, junk, jelly plate on junk mail is good. Jelly plate on, jelly plate on junk mail, jelly plate on magazine pages, jelly plate on book pages. Because I make a lot of altered books, I have a lot of book blocks and I love it. What does a thumbs up do for me? Well, I think if you get enough thumbs up, what happens is, is um, then YouTube puts you in a preferred, puts you in a, it, it shows that you have an active audience, I think. And I think they put you in like, you know, when they give you those recommended videos, they do that. They give you that. So, sorry you guys, I came all the way over here and I did not bring my phone hang on one second you guys make talks amongst yourself i'll be right back so i can go turn it off because it might just continue to keep going off it might continue to keep going off Guys, I wasn't prepared. That part I was not prepared for was the, the phone part. SAS is high in Greek. Oh, that's cool. Or what did I miss? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Scotty Woohoo Piggy Snoo, is that what you said? <laughs> You're hilarious. Bye, Lisa. Enjoy your dinner. We hope you enjoy your dinner. Bye, Scotty. Are you leaving? No, Scotty's not leaving. You guys are so funny. The Broncos game doesn't start for another hour. Are you a football fan there, Jamie? So you guys pop, post, um, hi Deborah, welcome, welcome, we're happy you're here. We're making library pockets. We are making library pockets. So you guys, make sure you guys go over to Scrap and Lizzie. Do you guys know who Scrap and Lizzie is? I love Scrap and Lizzie, okay? I love her, I love her, I love her. She brings me joy. She's definitely a con, I, I could definitely con Mari with, with, with Scrap and Lizzie and she brings me joy. Go over and, and, and watch her channel. She's hilarious, and she's a fun crafter, really knowledgeable. And she reminds me of my grandmother, you guys, and I love her. And what's super cool is she's figured out how to do live streams. And so she's live streaming. She's live streamed, I think, every day. And she does some really cool, she's on this, like, boho kick right now, and she's done some really cool stuff. So if you guys go over and support her, I love her. She's the sweetest, sweetest lady, and you can learn a lot. Scrap and Lizzie is her name, and she's just a really sweet lady. So I say go over and check her out. Do you guys have any new YouTube artists, people, new new YouTubers you want to give a shout shout out to? You're keeping her. I love her too. Isn't she like so fun? I missed what you said. I missed. It. You know, I'm not fast enough for the chat. I didn't look up. Hang on. Let me see what you said. Let's see. You love Scrap and Lizzie's. I have a video about making this. Are you asking me, do I have a video about making these, making this before? Yes, I make these all the time. I have a couple of videos. You may have seen it. All right. Sometimes if I'm making projects, I put them in there. So yes, I do. 
I'm keeping scrapped on Lizzie too. What do you have an eight and a half by eleven of Mary Kay? I missed that part too. You have pictures of your basement. It's completely bronchified. Oh, good for you, Jamie. You started your channel in June, Kara. Awesome. Good for you. Are you lagging? I don't know. Are you lagging? I don't think you're lagging. At the jelly plate? Um, that's awesome. Good for you. I'm glad you got a jelly. I love jelly plates. I'm, addicted, I'm totally addicted to it. You guys, I don't get any, like, I'm not an affiliate of any, of any crafting company. I'm not an affiliate, so I'm not, like, hawking some wares. I just enjoy it, and I think you would, too. You're going to make some soap tomorrow? Good for you. Hi, Patricia. How are you? We're glad you're here. So I'm not quite sure what a thumbs up does for you in the SEO rankings of your YouTube channel, but except that it just shows that people are active in your channel. And it also shows that people are not bots that watch, like, because I think people can get lots of views as a bot, you know, like a robot. You've had a jelly plate for five years, Mary Kay. That's awesome. It's your first time here, Patricia? Well, welcome. We're happy you're here. Thank you for coming and joining us. We are happy you are here. We're making um, a jelly printed on some book pages, and we're making some library pockets. It may not be rotten, Susan. If, if she has a store-bought one, I don't think they ever go. I don't think there's an expiration date on them. I mean, they put, what do I know? You know, I all I can say is try it. I think you might, you know, you'll you'll really enjoy using it. You will really enjoy using it. You will totally enjoy using it. I enjoy using mine, and I use it all the time. I enjoy using it all the time. Fun, fun. Fun. I have not made my own. I have all the stuff to make my own, but I have never made it. I've never made it. So I bought the stuff. I ordered the stuff to make my own, and what happened was um, my sister or somebody bought sent me one as a gift because they heard me talking about it. And so then I thought, oh, I'm not going to make one. And then the next thing you know, somebody else gave me one as a gift. And then this is not recent. Okay, this is a while back. And then then recently that my, my friend gave me the little tiny one, which I love too. So I've been thinking about making small ones, like different shape ones, like small round ones or heart ones or whatever, like something like that. But I haven't done it yet. But if I do, you guys will be the first to know. I will tell you guys. If I do it, I will tell you for sure. So, for those of you that are not as obsessed as I am with making library pockets, it is kind of fun. I think what I like to do a lot, and I don't know if any of you guys are like this, but I like to make stuff for, like, make it for, like, a stash. So, like, I like to make my, like, work on my stash. Get a bunch of stuff so that if I just want to sit down and put something together. Hi, Mary. You're not late. Of course, I'll do it over. I'm making them. I've been making them. made tons of them. So I like to make, like, like when I'm making paper clip embellishments, I'll sit down and maybe I'll make those for two or three days straight. Or maybe I'll make, or maybe I'll make, um, library pockets. Or maybe I'll make, you know, tags or whatever. I just go through and I make a bunch of, a bunch of stuff. And... Then I have it all ready when I want to put together a journal. Yep, okay, so what I did was I, you don't have to jelly print on yours. If you just want to know how to make the pocket, it's super easy. So if you are going to jelly print on yours, I jelly print on like the top part of the page, 
and then I flip it over and I jelly print on the bottom part because when you when you fold it up you see what I mean you're folding it up to you fold it up a third okay your book page so if you paint you can paint on the whole page but I don't see the point so now all you do is fold it up a third and then fold the sides back and you can see these are all the same size book pages, but look, they're all, I've made tons of different size pockets. So you could make pockets to fit any size page you wanted. There's no rule to it. No right or wrong. You can do what works for you. Okay? So folding it back. And the same with folding it back. You can decide how much you want to fold it back and how much you don't, right? So you fold it back. Fold back this side, right? And then you you have this. Now, now you're going to need to cut, and you're going to cut where you've scored it. So you're going to cut just the side parts, just the little parts. Ooh, the wind's blowing now. Just the side parts, the parts that you're blowing, that you're going to fold in. Cut one side. Cut the other side. And those are the parts that you're going to fold in, right? Now, sometimes, depending upon how well, how thick your page is, you may want to do a little. Sometimes I go back and I trim the bottom parts like this. I'll show you. So sometimes I cut the the top part. I'll show you. Let me just show you. I'll cut both of them, and you'll see. The bottom part I cut. And the top part I cut. So that side, right? Those are the parts that are going to fold. One's going to fold to the back and one's going to fold inside the pocket. So nobody's going to see your cut, so it doesn't matter if they're not perfect, okay? It doesn't even matter if they're not even, right? The mine aren't even, but you can see it. Now you're going to flip it back over and you're going to fold these in and those go inside. Just makes it lay better. But you need these little folding parts on the inside because otherwise, if you fold it around the back, you won't have very much room to stick anything in your pocket. They give you that little sort of gusset so that you can put something in your pocket. And then you just glue around the back. That's it. Not that difficult. And then you can stamp on them or, you know, you, you can make your whole, you don't even have to jelly print before you make them. You can jelly print after you make them. I've made them where you doodle on them. Elizabeth Brewer is under me on YouTube. I love Elizabeth Brewer. I love Scrapping Lizzie. She'd be my fave. She's one of my faves. Bye, Sally Ann. Are you leaving? Hope you have a wonderful... Thanks for sharing all your cool stuff you're making. I really loved your um, feathers. Okay, so here's one. Now you can see they're all different sizes based on how you fold it. Right? But isn't it cool? You can make your own library pockets out of anything. She's Elizabeth, Scrappin' Lizzie's Elizabeth Brewer. Sorry, you guys. I thought she was Scrappin' She's not, I only know her as Scrappin' Lizzie, but I love her so much. She is so, first of all, she's just so sweet. And second of all, she's just so fun, you know? Don't you think she's like a fun lady? I do. I love her. Mary Kay is using a book called How Her Journal Became a Bestseller. That's cool. You know what I'll do? Not Maybe in the next couple of weeks I'll do. I'll show you guys a bunch of books that I have that I love that are um, related to book altering and journaling. Stuff like that. Or alter. I love Scrap, Scrap and Lizzie. Love her. Fave. She's totally one of my faves. She's really funny about, she's just so, she's such a love. You guys, she's just, just lovely. I have a lot of favorite people on YouTube. Do you, who are some of your favorites on YouTube? Who, who are some of your faves that you like to watch?
Bye, Bright. Bye, Bridgeline. Love you, love you, love you. Have a wonderful night, Bridgeline. I hope you get some sleep, and we will see you. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow, crafting tomorrow. Crafting, crafting like crazy. Maybe we'll see you then. Oh, you're being sweet. I love caged fish. I love her too. I love her. She's one of my faves. I totally support her. You guys, she's got a Patreon channel. If you guys love her, go support her. She's got Patreon. I think she's doing some Patreon only videos and her and her subscription levels are very inexpensive. I love Dee Dee Willingham here. Two. I don't know if Carla's here today. She usually comes on Friday. She didn't know I was streaming today. I love Deli Girl. I haven't watched her in a long time, but I love some of her videos are so beautiful. Of course, Shannon Green. Shannon Green goes without saying. Shannon Green is like, I don't know. I love her. I love, but she's, she just makes me laugh, okay? Shannon Green is definitely like one of my favorites. I love Dee Dee. I like Deli Girl. I haven't watched any of her videos in a long time, though. I should. Cat hand, definitely cat hand. Yes, I like Mary too. The Mary Atelier, I like her too. You guys go over and watch Diane Fago. She is like, I have to tell you, one of my favorites. I don't know if she, she hasn't made any videos in a while. Um, she's Diane Fago and she used to be called Pack or Die. And she is awesome you guys have got to go and watch her of course we love michelle of course we love michelle scott she is one of our favorites i don't know nikki parr Lindsay the frugal crafter i like her too oh i love nina robin it's is it nina robina i think it's r-o-b-e-n-a i like her too i like her too do you guys go over and check out Diane Fago, F-A-G-O. Check her out. She does beautiful art journaling pages and just, she's, she doesn't like craft like this. She's like an artist. She makes like, I thought, I mean, maybe she does. She does iCAD a day and that sort of thing. I love her though. She's one of my faves. You ordered two of those journals from Shannon Vicky. That's awesome. Mary Kay likes Liz the Bookbinder. I don't know Liz the Bookbinder. It's Rabina. Nina Rabina. Okay. The International Crafter is Nikki Parr. International Crafters is Nikki Parr. Okay, so you guys watch International Crafters, Nikki Parr. Yes, who doesn't love Marmy Small Arts? I like her too. Oh, you just got yours in the mail, Nancy? Awesome. Then you have to do a show and tell. <laughs> You're so sweet. Ja You're sweet, Jamie. I appreciate that. You ordered three, Susan? I'm jelly, you guys. I'm so jelly. You ordered three. You guys, I love Shannon Green. I love her. She's got a lot to write down, Vicki. She got one for herself. She got one for herself, one for Bet. And did you get one for your horse, Susan? Because you know Susan has to have a horse, too. Now that you have a horse, Vicki, Susan's got to have a horse. <laughs> yeah, you guys go over and check out Diane Pega. Who else do I like? Um, I like a, a one named, I think her name is Ray. Is it Messing? You guys, I love her. She's fabulous. I'll post I'll post her link in our description box too. She's Nancy says she's a she has an addiction to paper crafting stuff, and she thinks she needs an intervention. We all do. We all do. And you ordered her stencil brush too. Now I'm really jealous. I'm jealous because I wanted those stencil brushes, but you guys, I don't need anything. I'm to the point. I'm. I made myself a horse envy. That's right, Vic. Horse envy. You guys, 
I have so much stuff that I just, some days I just want to be like, and I know that it's just because my space is small and right now it's not all together, but, well, maybe you guys may, may force me into buying a Shannon Green jewelry. You got the last brush? Well, oh well. Well, you know those brushes, those were like, people were asking her, she used them for some stencil thing. Those are like book glue brushes. I don't know where she got hers, but she can buy them. They're not, they're, she doesn't. She was trying to find them reasonable so that, because people wanted ones like she had, but she bought hers like 20 years ago, so. You wanted to order the small size too, Franna, and you resisted. Of course we love our Kylie Koo. Yes, we love our Kylie Koo. You guys, did you guys see the cool stuff she's making over there? You gotta go over and support her. I love, first of all, I love her voice. Can you, wouldn't you just love to like pick up the phone and have Kylie just say, Hello, you know, her beautiful Scottish accent. I love it. I love it. Well, I, you guys got me, got me, gotten some Shannon Green Journal Envy, and you got me that I'm definitely like the brush thing. Good for you, Susan. Now I can't wait to see all the stuff you make with that brush. Liz Drake. Yeah, she's awesome. I like her too. But you know what my favorite thing about Liz Drake is? And she she does have a cool voice. But you know what my favorite thing? Oh, Kylie Koo does have a cool voice too. I love her voice. The, my best, my, the, my one of my favorite things about Liz Drake is her ghost hunting things. Have you guys watched it when she goes into the, the thrift store? Now, I haven't watched them enough to know, does, does she, she volunteers at the thrift store or whatever, but she's always, every time I've watched it, she always thinks there's a ghost in the thrift store. I love it. I love it. Oh, you have to watch her Alta. Kylie is awesome. You know, she has an art group too. She has a Facebook group too. And um, she's just really, I love Kylie. Anyway, but you have to. I love Scotty too. Yes, Genevieve Harris is awesome. Genevieve, yeah, I like her too. Tracy Fox has a great voice. I don't know who Tracy Fox is. You're, you're getting excited to meet her? I want to meet her. I would love to meet Kylie Coe. I would love to, you know, first of all, I have a really dear friend in Scotland, so maybe I should go and visit my friend in Scotland and then just take a road trip over and craft with Kylie. Would that not be, like, the best? Would that not be the best? And then oh, I would love that. We all love Scotty. I agree with you. Now, her mother works at the thrift store. Is that what it is, Alta? I don't know. I just think, I what I think is hilarious is when she, like, thinks she sees a ghost or hears a ghost. And I don't know. I just love her. I love the fact that she's, like, she sits in her car. Like, well, I saw one where the ghost scared her so bad she went and sat in her car. You guys, I live a woo-woo life, so I can totally relate, okay? The ghost scared her, and she's like, I got to sit in my car. I love it. Vicky is meeting up with Scotty in two weeks. Oh, I am jealous. Are you guys going to the Shannon Green workshop? I wanted to go so bad. She and Rosemary Morris, who's also an awesome YouTuber, if you guys haven't watched her um, YouTube channel. She has the group Trashy Junk Journals, which I love. You guys know I love the Trashy Junk Journal. Um, are you guys going to the Rosemary Morris Shannon Green workshop at Rosemary Studio. I wanted to go so bad. So bad. For Shannon's workshop. Uh, you guys take a ton of pictures and then come back and tell me. I wanted to go. Okay. <laughs> Vicki says she's like a bad rash. She won't be able to get rid of her. Oh, Vicki. We love you. You guys are going to have a rocking good time. I love Rosemary Morris, and I love Shannon Green. You know, so you guys, you guys got, like, it's going to be so fun. You guys are going to have so much fun. It's a six-hour drive for you, Vicki. That's, that's not terrible. It's like, it would be really far for me. Jen Evers. You know, Lisa, I like Jen Evers, too. I don't, I should go back and watch her videos. She does, she does those five and ten-minute cards, right? Oh, Maria, I feel the same way. I love, you know, I haven't seen anyone on YouTube that I don't enjoy. 
But there's some that you just can't, like, you just can't get enough of, like Shannon Green. Like, Shannon Green, I have to say, is probably one of my all-time favorite crafters. You know, I love her. I love her. How far do you live from Vicky, Susan? Why don't you go, why don't you get to Vicky and why don't you guys drive to Shannon Green together? Oh my God, I would be so jealous. I agree, Nancy. We should have a crafting event where we all come. If you go to Shannon Green, I will be... I will be beyond excited for you, Susan, but I have to tell you, sister, I will be a little jelly, a little even more. You'll be with Scotty and with me, with Miss V.A. Pearl. Are you going to bring your hauls, Miss Vicky? Are you going to bring your hauls with you? I'm excited. How far, how many, how far are you away from, from Vicky, Susan? Can you drive there? Could you and Bet drive to, to Vicky and then go with Vicky, ride with Miss VA Pearl and her horse to see Miss Shannon Green? You guys would have so much fun. Oh, you should see if you can do it. That would be like, oh my gosh. You watched that one too of Liz Drake. I have to say, it made me laugh so hard. I can I can totally relate. You guys, I live such a woo-woo life. The ghosts are just part of it, you know, so I could totally relate. You have a YouTube channel too, Patricia? Well, we'll have to come over and see you. Do you do live streams? Tell us the name of your channel, Patricia. Shout it out, sister. Shout it out. 300 miles is not... Oh gosh, you guys should have all carpooled and gone to see Miss Shannon Green. I don't, is there workshop sold out? It could be. But I don't think they have that many, I don't think they have that many places, did they? <laughs> Susan says she's not riding six hours on no damn horse with three women. Oh Lord. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, if I lived anywhere close by, I would so come. So Patricia's channel is called Patricia Stubbs, S-T-U-B-B-S, and go watch it. That just subbed to you, Patricia. I'll sub to you after I get off of here, okay? Do you do live streams, Patricia? If you do live streams, you know we'll be there because we have to We have to be talking to each other because there's like, there's no way around talking to each other in this group of ladies. <laughs> She can run beside the horse. Oh, my God. You guys, when my kids have a confession to make. Okay, well, my kids used to be really bad, and they were. Okay, they would fight in the car and whatever. Pull each other's hair. You know, stuff kids do in the car. I used to always say, if you guys don't stop it, I'm going to make you get out, and I'm going to give you a rope, and you're going to have to run next to the car. You're going to have to hold the rope like a, like a, like a trainer. You know, like when you're training for a marathon, you have to run, hold the rope and run. And my kids actually believed me. Okay, guys, they were like, they, they would suddenly both be quiet. One of them say, I'm not running. And the other one would say, I didn't wear the right shoes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Hi, Lily. Oh, Patricia, we would love to see your stuff, what you do. Get yourself some live streams going, and we'll come and join you. Hi, Lily. It's morning there where you are. It's morning in India. It's morning in India. So you guys, post where you're from. Everybody post. Take two or three seconds and just shout it out. Shout, shout, let it all out. Post where you're from. Mm -hmm -hmm. Come on. I'm not a good poet, you guys. <laughs> oh, God. Fiona, catch a ride on a hoop snake. <laughs> Jacksonville, Florida. Colorado. 
South Africa, upstate New York, New Zealand, hi Miss Grizzle, Houston, Robinson, Illinois, Massachusetts, Houston, Mississippi, South Georgia, hi Sheila, Missouri, Sydney, Australia, Conroe, Texas. Hi, APG Jamie. Phoenix, Arizona, good old Texas from Miss V. April. Greece. India representing Aggieland, Texas. And Sarita's from South Africa, Missouri. You're from Missouri, Frida? That's awesome. You guys go over and check out APG Jamie. I I I'm a subscriber to your channel, Jamie. Artist Poet Girl Jamie. She's got she's got a great sense of humor. I love I love me some artist poet girl Jamie. Go over and check her out. APG Jamie. Go over and, and sub girls. You've been sitting and watching, girl. You are not a quiet girl. You're being a, you've been all hiding in the back like a lurker. You're not a lurker. We do have a lot of girls from Texas, and I am happy. You know, Texas is representing in the house. My favorite is in Texas too. APG Jamie, I love first of all, I love your laugh. You guys have got to go over and listen to her, especially because you guys have been with me and my laughing things. APG Jamie laughs just as heartily as I do. And she does some cool crafting. Some cool, cool crafting. I'm trying to remember what I watched the last of yours. I love I love your voice too, Jamie. You've got a great voice. It's 6 a.m. in India. Oh my gosh, that's early, Lily. You just sub to AP. Awesome! <laughs> no, you know what it is, Jamie, is that we have sometimes, like, there'll be like 10 girls chatting, but there'll be like 70 people watching. So that's why I just call out all the lurkers. But also, too, sometimes people are shy. Awesome! You guys go over and sub and show Jamie some love. She's awesome. I love her channel. Okay, I have like a really cheap camera. I have I have a, a Logitech camera, a Logitech. I ordered a new one. It has not come in. Okay, I got a notification. I ordered a new one because you guys were complaining about my sound and some stuff. So I ordered a new one, but I got a notification. It hasn't come in. You Texas girls need to definitely have a retreat. If an follows there, I'd be retreating with you. Girls should just join up Miss Vicky at her horse farm there. <laughs> Go craft with some horses, right, Vic? You guys should go meet in Temple. You guys would have so much fun. Phaedra has some cool videos. That's how I met Phaedra. I subbed to her channel. That's how we became friends. You guys, she made herself her own Mother's Day journal, and do you know what? I don't even know how and why I watched that video, Phaedra, but I loved it. And I made myself my own Mother's Day journal. And that's all because of Miss Phaedra. <laughs> we got to show the love, girls. Jamie, we show the love here. The one thing you can, we may not be, I may, we may not be like the fastest crafters, but we show the love. I'm not a fast crafter. Sometimes I am, you guys. If I get in the zone, I can be a fast crafter. Past, I don't know, for a while I have not been fast. Not fast crafting. Hi, KK. We're happy you're here. Welcome. Tell us where you're from. You guys are so ha so lucky to even be 200 miles from each other. If I live 200 miles from one of you girls, I'd drive. You guys, I can't get, the closest thing I can do is fly to LA or Portland. 
And I'm going to do it one day soon. I'm going to fly to Portland, and I promise to ask I go see her. I'm too far away to fee. You're picking up your new puppy, Vic? That's awesome. KK, where are you from? What kind of puppy are you getting, Vic? So if you guys haven't joined our Crafting Mamas Facebook group, go on over and join. It's just a really fun, supportive group of ladies. We've kind of had to ban the men because we've had some, we've had, we, they had, we had some little issues there. And hi, Rabbit. Welcome, welcome. You need a guard dog? Oh my God, you're hilarious. You're buying a boxer. Vicky says she needs a guard dog to bite the meth dealer who lives behind her. You are hilarious. I thought your horse was doing that. I thought your horse was biting the meth dealer. As long as the horse and the puppy get along. I know, right? That's all that matters. If you guys haven't joined our Facebook group, go on over. It's just a really fun group of ladies, and it just continues the chat. Everybody's looking to find their crafty best friend, and some have. So head on over. It's called Crafting Mamas. I missed what you said, KK. We're not a he-man's woman hater club, but you know what happened, Jamie? It was ridiculous, okay? If you go back and watch the video, Pocket Man, you'll get it all. You'll totally get it all. We had, we're not a man haters club, okay? We are totally not a man haters club. We, so I've been doing these live streams for a while, and everybody was really enjoying getting to know each other, and so, and I would get all these constant chats afterwards, like messages through YouTube. So it just, the Facebook group sort of grew out of that. So it never dawned on me that people were like coming to the Facebook group that weren't here, you know, and it grew really fast. We've had this Facebook group like just a couple months and we have almost 2,000, almost 2,000 members. Well, a guy joined and a guy joined and, you know, I wasn't, I was like, okay, cool. But then he, po he posted like sort of really bad lady part art. And I wasn't being critical because there, there only there's only a couple group rules: no selling, and you have to be kind. If you can't say something nice, <laughs> if you can't say something nice that, about somebody's art, then you can't be in there, right? That, that's really it. Like no no sales. There's really not much. Be nice. That's all. Well, he so I didn't say anything. You know, I was like, ah, oh, well, it's a, it was kind of it wasn't very good lady part art, but you know, I was like, all right, so. You know, the girls and I discussed it. I said, let's just don't comment too much on it. We can, we can say, oh, good job. But, you know, I said, it'll fall to the bottom of the feed. And I'm not going to, I was trying not to be approved. Okay, so he posted, and he posted a few things. He posted some bad graffiti art, and he posted some bad lady part art. And one day, several weeks later, he posts a picture of his pants. And he said he fixed his pocket. He's wearing these work pants, okay? <laughs> He's wearing these work pants. They're like, you know, like, uh, I don't know. He's just wearing work pants. So they were like two-toned, like sort of a burnt orange. And, and then the black, the pocket was lined around with black. And I was like, because we have, our crafting group is open to all kinds of crafters, not just, not just paper crafting. And so we have some seamstresses. We have some people that sew and knit. We have some jewelers. We have some soap makers, which is awesome. And we have um, a really amazing um, macrame artist. You know, you can show whatever kind of art you do. So I was trying not to be too critical. And I was like, looking at it, I was like, why did he post that? Jamie, I'm telling you, girl, I did not see it. But Eagle Eye Susan did. And she sent me a message. I remember seeing it and thinking, okay, well, he sewed his pocket. Big damn deal, you know? Like, what's that? Girl, that is not what he was pointing to, okay? He said he fixed his pocket or he sewed his pocket is what he said. He was he was just, 
he had something more in his pocket and I was so naive that I didn't see it. And all of us were trying to be so super supportive and I was trying not to be a prude. So for Eagle Eye Susan, man, she saw it <laughs> and then she sent me a notification. So we banned him from our group because he was showing it. <laughs> He was showing us what was in his pocket. So we we banned him. So we're not a man haters club. We just decided that it's better at this point. That it's better. Yeah, yeah Fiona called him the Levi guy. We just think it's better for right now that, you know, <laughs> that we just let the men go. <laughs> so we're not a man haters club. We aren't. <laughs> it was just just caught me off guard that's all it's like I wasn't expecting that so that is why we we just collectively decided <laughs> it was awful rabbit go back and watch the video pocket man okay you've never heard the story oh my god Vicki go back and watch pocket man pocket oh my god we laughed so hard you totally missed the thing in his pocket, too? <laughs> oh, Phaedra. I didn't see it either, but I sent the picture to Hottie. And he was like, what is this guy doing posting that in your Facebook group? And, <laughs> and the worst part all, none of us saw it except Eagle Eye Susan, man. Susan was on it. Thank God for Susan. Susan was like, she was brilliant. I could cut the top of it along the way. Do you know I considered it? I just might to go back and do that. You totally missed the pocket thing. Oh my God. You like the picture list? I, you know what? I think I did too. I think I wrote nice job or something because I was trying not to be a prude. Oh my God, you guys. Never again. I can be a prude if I want to. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. So we just kind of made a general rule that unless like, now if you wanted to refer a guy to our crafting group and he was into crafting, then we would consider that. Okay. But just to have somebody in there who, it was ridiculous. It was awful, wasn't it? It was, <laughs> oh my God, you have got to go back and watch Pocket Man. That's why one of the videos is called Pocket Man. Okay. And I don't know where we start talking about it, or I don't even know how, but <laughs> anyway, it was ridiculous, you guys. It was so ridiculous. And we were all trying to be PC with him, okay? <laughs> you went to make smoothies, Mary? Good for you. Oh, my God. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. It was so ridiculous. <laughs> Fiona says that that she knew it, that that she's a lesbian and she knew where he was going with his pockets. <laughs> Fiona, you know, I don't happen to be a lesbian, but you know what? I didn't get it because you know what? I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I wasn't like I anyway, but the, the 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 thought that crossed my mind is that you know like he woke up in the morning and he was like, he was like, he probably like woke up in the morning and goes, hey, I'm just gonna head over to that crafting ladies group, <laughs> and I'm just gonna show him what's in my bucket. <laughs> I mean, what what? what? Like, what, what was going through his head? Hello, lady. He was like, hello, ladies. We're, we're so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy to be posting my pocket in your group. I mean, I don't know. You guys, he had to take the picture of the pocket and everything with that in mind. I don't know. You guys, my head doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know what, Vicky? I'm just naive. You know what, Kiki? Our Facebook group is always in the in the bottom of the. There's always a link in in, in every video. <laughs> I 
We're happy you joined us. Patricia, welcome to our group. It's a fun group. You know, it's, a, it's such a lovely group of ladies. <laughs> and maybe there are some men in there posing at ladies. You guys, uh, we get probably five or six requests a day from men. We do. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's a fun group of ladies and very supportive and just really lovely. People post all kinds of stuff. All their beautiful pets and children and whatever. You know, we obviously posted pictures of the flood during the Houston flood because so many of you live there and I'm from there. And you know, the only rules are you just be kind. If you don't like somebody's art, just don't don't comment on it. You know, don't don't and you can't you can't be mean and and you can't sell. And so, you know, that's all. But you can post like all any types of creations you have, any videos that you have where you're making your own stuff, post them in the group, you know, like we're all for that. If you're going to do a live stream, you can totally post it in the group. We want you guys to, you know, it's your group too. Anyway, we've had some good laughs. <laughs> he was dead. Lisa's right. He was definitely in the wrong group because if it wasn't for Susan, he would still be... We would still be approving his sewing skills. <laughs> oh, Lisa. <laughs> you are so right. Oh, my God. Oh, you are so right. Thank you, Susan. Thank you for always having my back. Hi, Renee. Oh, Renee, nothing's going on. I was just having a, I was having a little bit of a, I just needed a little, I needed some little love from the ladies. I needed some, some, some love from you gals. That's what's going on. We're making library pockets. Oh my gosh. Oh Lord. These mamas are naive, Susan. We are. <laughs> oh my God. Are you okay, Fee? Did you, what happened? Did you get logged out? The dog is now crying because the kids are playing outside. You can't go out by yourself, babe. You can't go out. You can go out soon, okay? The dog wants to go outside and play. The dog is convinced that she is. How old are you? Are you going to tell everybody? Are you talking, Charlie? Tell them. How old are you, Charlie? How old are you, puppin? <laughs> you want to go outside and play with the kids? I know you do. You can go out when my little one's not even home from school and the dog the dog hears the other kids walking home from school and she wants to go out. <laughs> Do you hear her? She's going to cry. You have to wait, honey. She thinks she can actually go out by herself. Do you want to go outside? Is that what it is? And play with the kids? Do you? Where's your baby? Go get me your baby. She, goes, she can't help it. She wants to go outside. She'll be home soon, and then you can go outside, Puppin. Okay? You guys, that was just, he was hilarious. <laughs> we love you, Fee. We never want to get rid of you. <laughs> Fiona has a sore throat. She had to go get a, fro <laughs> go get a frozen pole. A frozen pole? An icy pole? What is it? <laughs> what are you talking? Oh my god. Fiona, is that a popsicle? That's a <laughs> you guys, the dog, the dog really wants to go outside and play with the neighborhood kids. Like, I'm going to go out and play with the na neighborhood kids. Oh my god. Is it called, Is a popsicle called a frozen pole or an icy pole? What is it? Come here. <laughs> Because the dog, the dog wants to go outside. She's like ridiculous. <laughs> she is. Here's the kid. Your real name, you, KK. Your real name is Karen. Well, nice to meet you, Karen. <laughs> what will I do with all these? These are all going to go into junk journals or junk journal kits. I make junk journals, Rabbit. Hey, do you, do you make do you make junk journals? <laughs> Australians call popsicles frozen pole. Oh my god. Oh, I love it. 
<laughs> Jamie says, Jamie says she thinks this conversation went south quickly. Now that's the name of a pop musical, Jamie. <laughs> She says we're thinking dirty and now popsicles sound dirty. Oh my gosh, you guys are so funny. You are hilarious. <laughs> do you do you do you paper graph rabbit? Fiona says she fell asleep eating a popsicle yesterday because her throat and slit <laughs> fell asleep yesterday with her icy pole melted on her laptop, blankets and sheets. <laughs> Can I show you the one I made last night? What did I make last night, Alta? I made so many things. Are we talking about my... Well, what are you talking about? What did I make last... You mean the, the feathers that I made? What did I make? I make stuff all the time. <laughs> Liz says she has two cats trying to find Charlie every time she winds the cat paws the monitor. Charlie thinks that she is a child. Oh, rabbit, you just got to keep making it. Don't throw it away. Just keep doing it until you find... You have to practice. If you don't practice, you won't ever like it. Alta, tell me what I showed you guys, and if I have it close by, I'll show you. What did I make last night? The pocket. What pocket did I make last night? I don't even remember. Did I make... Hmm. I don't know. What did I make? Can somebody refresh my memory of what I made? I made... I made, um, these are all the ones I made today. I made tons of them today. And if you're talking about the ones that I showed in that junk journal kit, I already mailed those out. I mailed out, or that junk journal kit's going out to its recipient. And let me see, I've got the dog in my lap. I've got the dog in my lap. And, Rabbit, you just have to have fun. Oh, the feathers that I made? I can show you guys the feathers I made. I made a bunch of feathers last... What else did I make besides feathers, you guys? I made... What did I make? You guys, I don't even remember. I make so much stuff, you guys, sometimes. I don't remember what I make. I have the dog. Can you see the dog's butt? The dog's butt is just sitting on my, on my shoulder like a... Um... Oh, the doily pocket. Okay, hang on. I got the, the dog is sitting on my shoulder. The ephemera and feathers. Okay, let me see. All right, here is some of the feathers. I made a few more feathers. If you guys haven't made these, these are like really addictive making these paper feathers. Okay, hang on. I was going to paint tags. I didn't even get to that. <clears throat> All right, let's see. I have I have this one that I made out of a doily. Is that the one you're talking about? It's like an envelope. It's just a doily. Maybe it was Friday night. You know what? I don't know what. I made all these feathers. If that's what you want me to show you. And I do have some ephemera. Shh. Hush. The, do the dog has, like, decided she's going to sit behind me and cry. She wants to go outside so bad, you guys. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm not going outside and playing with her. Okay, I'm not taking her outside. When my daughter gets home from... Oh, I know which one you want me to show. The one with the bingo card. Okay, let me find them. That one. All right, I'm sorry. I've got my mess going on here. This is, like, some... See, I have an envelope of, of like bits and pieces. And if you guys haven't made um, these feathers, they're fun. All right, I'll show you. I know which one you're talking about now. Sorry, Alta, I'm a little slow. Okay. Oh, my goodness, you guys. My daughter's not even home from school, and the kids are standing across the street yelling for her. Okay? This is, <laughs> this is the, the life of an 11-year-old. Okay. Sorry, I got my mess going on. Hush. She's not home yet. When she comes home, I'll tell her to come over. <laughs> They're all, you guys, now they're... Hush. 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 No, you're okay. You're okay. Okay, you're okay. Okay, this is the one Alta wants me to show you. I only have one because I, I mailed out some in Happy Mail. So this is the pocket that I made. I mailed out the other ones in Happy Mail. They're super easy to make. Carol, I'll make one with you. Let me just clean off my desk. So I got my feather blanks going on. 
Yeah, I made little oh envelopes from squares. That's nothing. Right. I can show you how to do, do that. That's fine. That's that's cool. Right. Then I made all these feathers, and then I made some out of painted papers and jelly printed magazine pages. If you guys haven't done that, it was like so fun and very addictive. Some of you guys did. I saw you guys posted them in in the Facebook group, but I will show you. I will happily show you that little. Let me just see if I have my hole punch though. I may not have it here. You guys, I tried to clean up a little bit. Not that I cleaned up that much. Yes, I haven't really. I was outside doing yard work. I got sunburned yesterday from just being out like a half an hour in the heat of day. And I had sunscreen on. I got like some crazy sunburn. Okay. A shout out from Chi-Town. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so this was the little pocket that I made. These these little silly pockets. This one's out of a very old book and it's the, the paper is really nice. But here, let's make one. <clears throat> I didn't jelly print on the whole page. Let me just give me a sec. What are you doing, pup? Can you just hang out? So I make these pockets all the time, and they're really super fun and very easy. And find yourself a Tom Clancy book, you guys. These make the the page quality is great. Okay, so to make that, I'll make you both, I can show you the envelope too, but to make this pocket, this just has a paper napkin stamp that I um, stamped on top of it. Okay, so all I did for this pocket was I folded one side over, okay, and then the other side over the top of it, because you want it, you want it to be the same size, and then this is going to go on the inside, Then you take your circle punch, and you find the center. Obviously, this one I may not find the center, but it's okay. You can't make these wrong, okay? But you want to, you want to, you want to cut the circle out before you glue it down, okay? And then, and sometimes if you've, if you've cut this, or if the circle comes in, you've got to know you just have to cut the corner of your inside off just a little bit, so that it doesn't interfere with your circle, okay? And then you fold the bottom up. All right, and then I cut parts of mine off. It depends upon how your book page is. Good night, Mary. Night, Maria. I hope you sleep well. All right, cut off this side, the little tiny, and it's already scored. Cut the little fold off at the bottom there. And you want to do the same thing on the other side. You want to cut it off. The extra, whatever, how much ever you folded it up. And you can make these to fit any size pockets as well. I mean, any size pages that you want as well. Okay, I cut mine a little bit, but you don't have to cut yours up. I cut my, I trim, see how, it, this is what it looks like. Okay, can you see? Your husband thought you were actually hiding a dog from him the other night. I'm so sorry, Jamie. She is like, she thinks she's a child. And she just wants to be outside with the kids. And the other day, Heidi left with the, her leash and her halter in the car. And she's a whippet, so she runs really fast. She can't let her out by herself. I mean, you have to keep her on a leash. And she cried the whole time because usually my daughter takes her out to play with the other kids. And they go in all over the neighborhood and jump on trampolines and do all kinds of stuff. Okay, so you can trim it as much or as little as you want. I probably trimmed that one up a little bit too much, but it's okay. Can't really make a, make a mistake. All right, so then you just want to glue your pieces together. And this is a great way, if you guys have leftover bits from your paper napkin decoupage and that sort of thing, you know, like, you know how you always have something left over? This is a great way to use it, paper napkin decoupage. Or I like to use the white part of the, the napkins and... Uh, and stamp on them and then glue them on top. All right. But you can do it any way you want. There's no right or wrong. Okay. No right or wrong. It's your pocket. You do with it as you will. All right. So that's the pocket that I made the other night, Alta. That's this pocket. That's this one right here with the bingo card on it. And then I just went back. I don't have a paper napkin. I think I, I don't think I have any paper napkin scraps on this table. Um, I think I, 
maybe I have one over here. I have a little tiny table that sits next to me that I keep extra stuff on, but I don't think I have any. Let me see what kind of stamp I have. Maybe I can stamp on it with something. So you know when you take your napkins apart, I save the I save the the insides of the napkin. You know the second and third layers. There's usually three layers on a napkin, and I save them and I stamp all over them. Do you guys do that too? Do you guys do that? Night, Mary. Do you do that too? Does anybody else do that? Save their like white bits of their napkin. When you take them apart, I had to mail somebody some napkins the other day, so I am. Um, and then I just stamp on mine. I stamp all over it. You know, you can do whatever you want, but I like to stamp on on the napkin. And then I use that in my decoupage. I've used collage page. I like it. Um, I honestly just, I like, uh, it works good, but my favorite thing is a glue stick. And I try not to, if I'm going to seal something, I don't know, maybe you guys pipe in. APG Jamie, if you're still here, you pipe in. You tell people what you use. You probably are more experienced than I am with, uh, I mean, I like white glue. I, I like the Elmer's extreme light glue. I like collage podge. I like Mod Podge too. But Mod Podge a lot of times, and I don't know if they don't have a formula that doesn't stick, but there are formulas. Their Mod Podge will, especially if you send this stuff in the mail, will stick. Okay? So then what I did after that was I just cut up a piece of a napkin and I glue sticked it on. Oh look, it already went through the other side. Cool, cool beans. So the little one's home. the little one's home, so the dog is now gonna go crazy. Sorry. So just cut up your napkin and then I use glue stick for mine. You can you you can use collage podge and mod podge and all that, but I just use glue stick. I mean it doesn't add that extra sheen or whatever on the top of your page, but I think it works good on and I'm just gonna let me see what am I how many of these am I gonna put on here? So this is just what I did the other night, Alta. This is my very exciting you know, my whole thing is try to use as much of the stuff as you already have before you go and invest in a lot of stuff because you'll find if you really look around you really have almost everything that you need that you don't really have to go out and buy anything that you'll have you'll have a lot of the stuff that you, you'll have most of the stuff that you already need already in your stash that you don't need to go and buy anything and so if you have that if you already have say napkins and then you have two or three layers inside of them that you weren't using and you stamp on them, they just make a really cool little addition to your to your journals, right? Or to your whatever sort of paper crafting you do. You know, they make like fun additions to your to your crafting. Hey, your friends already came over and asked for you. And the dog has been crying and whining because she wants to go out, so out to play with your friends so if you late if you ladies have all of this if you already have this in your stash um, then then why not use it up right now I just use glue stick on mine but you can use whatever you want on yours right so okay. Because my desk is a wreck. I try to start out with a clean desk. You guys know me. I try to start out with a clean desk. It doesn't work. What did you guys... You have white glue. White glue works good too. Okay, you don't want to put... You want to put your... You want to put your glue on the... This glue stick's almost out. You put... You want to put your glue on... You put your glue... You want to put your glue on your on the book page you don't want to put it on the napkin you know what I mean you put the glue on the book page you do need a credit card or something that will smooth out the 
smooth out the, the wrinkles. And then, let's see, I know I have a credit card here on this messy desk. Oh, you guys, my desk is like a wreck. You need you need a, a flat surface. I can use this. I don't. It's better if you have a credit card because you can smooth and you want to go from the center out. Okay, whatever image you're laying down. You know you want to you want to smooth from the center out. If you have a, a gift card or a credit card, those are my favorite things. Right now, my new favorite ones are Starbucks cards. And then you just, and that's it. Now, if you wanted to, if you want to seal it, you can, but you don't need to. I mean, there's really no necessity in sealing it. If you don't, if you don't, uh, if you don't want to. But if you do, you could use white glue. The only, what well, you could use a, a white glue water mixture. The only thing you want to keep in mind is that when you do use stuff like that, you know, they're really wet and these napkin layers are really, you know, they can wrinkle and do whatever. And you also want, if you're going to, if you're going to use a sealer on it, you want to use a permanent ink because otherwise it'll just run like a watercolor, you know, when you mix the, but there you go, Alta. Does that make you, is that good? You're having a challenging moment. What happened, Trish? I do go through a lot of glue. I like all kinds of glue though. I, I have, I, I'm like, I love glue. Okay, what had you in fits? What did I miss? Because I wasn't watching. Good night, Phaedra. Sending you so much love. Yeah, you can do it. You can put Mod Podge on the bottom and the top. Just test it out. The only thing with Mod Podge, I mean, if you're going to do that, get a clear acrylic medium or something like that. Um, oh, no, Trish, really? If you get a clear acrylic medium, um, it won't, your pages won't stick together. When you use Mod Podge and you want to put it in something and mail it, it'll stick together with something. Good night, Phaedra. Oh, Trish, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Hi, Jamie. Oh, Trish, I'm sending you so much love. Sending you so, so much love. Bye, Alta. I haven't used Ceramico varnish. I'll try it, Vicki. I'm open for trying that stuff. I'm totally open. Well, I hope that helped you, Alta. That was the pocket that I made. You know, I make so much stuff all the time, Alta. I always, and I also, the days here, you know, when the weather is pretty much the same all the time, you kind of go into like a state of not knowing what day is what. You know what I mean? So. Bye, Jamie, love. See you later, alligator. I look forward to seeing your soap. Have a fun time watching the ball game. And you know what? Grab it if you're going to do it. Mix it in a smaller bottle. You know, like put a few tablespoons of Mod Podge into something else and then mix a little water with it, you know, until you get the consistency you like. Okay, my lovely girls. Know that I love you. I'm going to I'm going to say I do. If you guys want a little aloha before you leave, just close your eyes and breathe in. Make sure your feet are on the floor and breathe in. And let go. And one more time, breathe in. And let go. And one more time. I love you girls. I love, love, love you. So if you guys haven't joined our Facebook group, go on over. Call Craft.
Crafting Mamas on Facebook, and we'd love to have you. Um, for those of you that have stuck with me for these past few hours, I appreciate you. Thanks for hanging with me, ladies. Night, Lily, or morning, Lily. I hope you have a great day. I really appreciate your friendship. I really appreciate the kindnesses you not only show me, but to everybody else. And you, and you girls know my motto is always, from my heart to your heart, I'm sending you so, so, so much aloha. Trish, I'll keep your daughter's dad in my prayers, and I love you, ladies. I love, love, love you. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, my regular time, which will be 3 o'clock tomorrow, and we'll make some... Hi, Pam. We'll make some... Cool, just bring some cardboard, some packaging, like this type of packaging. Uh, for, you know, and a photograph or two that can be of anything, but make sure they're just like copy paper or, you know, something you've printed out. It could be a printable. You need something to seal it with, so glue or Mod Podge, some glitter, something to poke a hole with, piece of ribbon, and some bling. Whatever kind of bling you have, if you've got flatback pearls or sequins or, and if you don't have any of it, bring some little pearlized paint. Um, we can, you can do it with that. Anyway, ladies, I want to send you so much love. I love you, love you, love you, love you. And I hope you have a wonderful, crafty day. And if you guys message me over at Facebook and let me know how you're doing, I'm always around, okay? Sending you so much aloha. Thanks, ladies. Thanks for all you new ladies that joined us. We appreciate it. Welcome to Crafting Mamas. Take care. Huge hugs. Aloha.